Mark. All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of TNT Photon HQ. Today we'll be reviewing a plethora of a, to a plethora of a to plethora of topics, and um, we're right. going to be introducing one of the main. I would say, like one of the. Uh, what is she? She's like the um, founding members of TNT Photon HQ. When I first started the show, she was the one that was on board. It was just me. I was bullshitting so much and dealing with other issues. She moved on and she went and found somebody else. So now I got her back. So now I got her back and I got her back on the show and she's going to introduce herself. Miss Mistress Mino, take it away or Ginger Snap, whichever one you would prefer to be called. Take it away, sweetheart. Hey, In the meantime, I'm going to be posting up to social media. Take it away. Let them know about you. Let them know what you do. How you want to fight me and you won't beat me up? Let them know everything. Um, I'll, I'll fight you and I will beat you up. I doubt it. I doubt and it. I'm just uh, okay. I'm a, I'm a I'm a young person. Just, <laughs> am I cutting off? Because I feel like I'm cutting off in here in the chat. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna echo. Kind of. of life and and I love jujitsu. Discovered it about. Year and a half, almost getting to be two years from now, like I'm and I'm starting to get, to get into the role of being more of a competitor. We'll see how, how that goes, you know. And that's kind of exciting. So I train every day. I love games, movies. I'm a big movie fanatic. Good. And yeah, and I met Danae during some games, and we've been bestest buddies ever since. Absolutely. I just had to put him in his place every once in a while, you and know? Put me in my place because you know I don't allow you. I ain't going to, I would never allow you to check me. It don't go like that. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, I met, um, which name would you like to go by? Ginger Snap or uh, Minnow? Which I like Ginger Snap. That sounds good to like me, Ginger, Ginger Snap. Snap. Yeah, I met Ginger Snap in the room where it was it was complete chaos. This was back on the Xbox 360 days, right? And um, and the person it, it was just crazy because she ran in my room and she came in and she brought like a, a like a group of individuals that were just like angry and upset, full of angst and everything. And I was like, mm. <laughs> my type of scum. I mean, they they were they, it was it was just complete chaos. But amidst all of the chaos. We became friends because she said this one joke. <laughs> she said this one joke. And I guess she thought it was going to offend me. And I absolutely, I said, that's what I'm talking about. That's how I want it, boy. I said, I want you to bring it to me just like that. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, really? <laughs> and ever since then, we've been the best of friends. We've been the best of friends. Yeah. But yeah I mean, you know, she's, she's pretty good at Gears of War. I remember, um, even though I knocked her nugget around a couple of times when we played Gears of War. She's pretty good at Gears of War. Um, I remember her playing. We, we played a couple of games together. Just played. a couple. Yeah. We I think we've done mainly shooters I've done. Yeah, yeah. Um, shooters and, of course, I like Skyrim. I've been having a having a desire to play Skyrim lately, but I haven't because my children decided to play with it. Not actually put it in, but then just have the disc and lose it because that's how kids play. Right, right, right. <laughs> Right. So, um, you know, I mean, let them know anything. Let them know all everything you want them to know about you. In the meantime, I'm gonna um, post up the social media. But if you're done, Kenny, take it away on what uh on a couple of topics you got to um mention, brother. Man, so actually sitting around, and I actually heard kind of late on October 16th. He read Dennis Hoff, who ran the Bunny Ranch in Nevada, passed away. Oh man, man, yeah, and in, 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 in surprising manner, you gotta find out one of his whorehouses, like the Love Ranch, by uh, Ron Jeremy. Surprisingly, uh, I, I, I am familiar with that name. I knew that he um had a bunny ranch, but I wasn't like very familiar like um, about his background and all you, that. You ever see the documentary American Pimp? Yes, I saw that one. I saw yeah, that. Yes, he, I did. Yes, he's the big puffed up white guy, the big fat white guy who looks kind of Trumpish. What happened? <laughs> How did he die? What did he die from? What? I, I, he was at a whorehouse. I'm guessing he overfucked himself to death. Uh, syphilis. I don't. <laughs> syphilis. <laughs> it's, interestingly enough, on American Pimp, he kind of said, "Hey, if I die, I'm gonna die in one of my whorehouses doing just this." But, hey, he called his own self out. That was fantastic. Yeah. But I actually kind of <laughs> semi met the guy because I interviewed him on one of my Rinky Dink shows before. 
interesting fella had a bunch of corny jokes about prostitution. And it, like, it, it, they were actually kind of funny, but just kind of... Well, like, when it's your business, I guess that's the only thing you can joke about, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> hey, McKinley Miles, thanks for stopping through. Hit the like button, brother. Uh, yeah, you got Battlefront 2 now? Which one? Star? Oh, man, I don't like Star Wars Battlefront 2. I got it, but I don't play it. I uninstalled it off my Xbox. But if you want to play it, I'll play it with you. I'll, I'll put it back on there. Just make sure you add me up, um, Miles. All right? Did you buy anything on it, Danae? No, I ain't oh, buy shit. Wars. I had got the Ultimate Pack, and I thought I had... See, that's the thing. I always go for these versions of games that, um, that I, you know, if I really like the game or I'm really into the genre of, you know, whatever it is, I'll get the Ultimate version, and I end up just getting pissed off because, like, when I bought that Street Fighter... What was that? What's the new Street Fighter? Street Fighter Street 5. Fighter 5. Yeah, I bought Street Fighter Five. They told me I would get this, I would get that, and I'm still buying shit for this motherfucker. Like, and I paid like a hundred dollars, hundred hundred. For the season pass or just? Yeah, I mean, like they didn't give me anything, and I told them I sent them a message. I sent them hmm. a message. I mean, like I was like, "Yo, why, why, how come I'm still buying shit?" They just got quiet. Like they ain't send nothing. Like, yeah, that's kind of messed up. It's been a hot minute since I've played anything. Ever since I had my mic not work, I haven't bought a new one and so right. i've just been watching movies actually watching shows a lot mm, what you've been watching uh i've been watching a lot of of course my favorite show office you still watching that shit i love it yo but you've been watching that since i met you and that was like eight like 20 years ago man like come on <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's an oldie but goodie, you know. I know, but Actually, come on. I, I, what's <laughs> nice about it is when I have trouble sleeping, I know the show and I've seen the show so often so that if I just listen to it, yeah. it's sort of like street theater because I already see what's going on in my head because I hear it. Does that make sense? No, I'm and it helps me to sleep I'm because like it's noise. So mellow. I'm like a white noise scene, like when the people are fighting outside yeah. my house late at night and stuff. <laughs> baby mama issues and stuff. I'd be like, ah, feels like home. <laughs> or, the, or, or cats, apparently, because then didn't you just find cats under your car? Oh, yes. I found a litter of kittens under there, and um, <laughs> I actually brought attached to them, even though they're ruining my car. So <laughs> where, so where where are the kittens at now? They're all they're all over the yard. I don't know. Like, you know, I'm building them a um feral cat house, but um. Yeah, they're like all over the yard and stuff like that. So all those times my dog was barking, she was literally barking, like telling me, like, yo, you got like a family of cats out here, bro. Do something. Like, you know what I'm saying? Your dog ain't try to fuck them up? I would never let my dog attack other like because even though she it ain't try though, like like get aggressive towards them. She does, but she doesn't. You know what I'm saying? She just don't like when they get too out of hand, like running past past her and just like she just, she just like barks up in their face. She's not really going to do anything, but she's just going to say, yo, you're in my spot. Pretty much. Pretty much. Hmm. Fierce good. Says, What's up, Fierce? What's up, Fierce? Fierce Place says, I thought you were starting at 10. Good thing I checked your page. I said nothing about 10, bro. You don't follow me. Oh, is that, is that, wait, isn't that my cinnamon bear? Yeah, that's cinnamon bear. Yes, that is cinnamon bear. <laughs> Remember he got mad. He just lost it one day. He was like, stop calling me that. <laughs> like, stop calling me that. That's my name for my you. Name. No one else. Well, only Danae is the only one that can say it. Cinnamon Bear. <laughs> Cinnamon Bear. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, um, but yeah, Mika, go ahead and talk about um what's his name? David. First and first and foremost, first and foremost, um, I really wanted to introduce myself to Ginger Snap due to the fact that, you know, like we're just now meeting, I want her to know, like you know, like a little bit about myself before. Oh, go ahead, by I all go means. Ahead with, by all means. With, with, with my boring life, um, I, my name is Shamika Sykes. Um, Danae calls me Miss Mika. Um, I am a um, writer for Urban Magazine, which is um a lifestyle publication. We talk about hip hop, fashion, and all that shit. Um, I am also a DJ. I am also uh, like a child of the nightlife. Um. Uh, open bar duchess. Uh, that's probably why I got the fucking headache right now. But um, <laughs> but um, yeah. Pretty much, I live a very, very boring life. Wait, very how can boring. you live a boring life being a DJ and then? And she's like, said, open too. bar. I'm like, yes. that sounds like a hell of party to me. She's a good DJ. No <laughs> bullshit. And I'm my, not. <laughs> my life is a party. Good. <laughs> 
my life is a party. I, I like man. I like um, dancing, but I make sure if I go to a club that there's a lot of people before I dance because you see how white this is. Yes, yes. I need I need a a wall of people not what looking at me dance. What do you mean? Oh, so you can't dance? I, I don't think I. Yeah. <laughs> Because oh. they're like all the places that I go to, yeah, it's gonna be kind of hard. So my advice to you is just dance like no one's watching. Exactly. All right. Well, for you, I'll dance on the floor for you. I gotta listen to your music. Yay! I love her already, Danae. Yeah, I'm telling you, all my <laughs> friends are awesome. Some fierce place at boring life, huh? <laughs> it was like boring. <laughs> boring life, huh? So Mika, yeah, so the topic, your boy, um, the topic that I wanted to speak about, um, like it, it, it kind of, um. Talks about like like um what I do and whatnot, but um if you're familiar with David Guetta, he was he did a um video on Nightline on ABC, yeah, and the 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 caption went, David Guetta speaks about how he brought house music. Oh my to god, is what? <laughs> he, he brought house music to matter. no David Guetta like he. He brought house music to the U.S. and man, like the people from New York and Chicago were pissed. Yeah, they should be because he got some nerves and some shit like that. He didn't bring no house to no fucking to um what was that New York and all of that shit. It's lame ass out of here. He actually rode in on the coattails when we was already here. It was already here, like Chicago house, Deep House, North New Jersey house. All that shit was already here. What is he talking about? Now, what I'm I am going to say is like before he did delve into the EDM scene, he was doing underground house. He was doing that. Yes, um, he was, he but was it was already here. Yeah. Like, yeah, but I guess you know, like he wanted to venture somewhere else, and then now he just made it. Oh, like he did not bring house music to <laughs> the states, <laughs> and then like everybody is getting mad and. I'm looking at it this way, and I, I made a discussion about this on Facebook, and everybody put their two cents in. I asked if keeping it underground plays a huge responsibility in people Columbusing the culture. You get what I'm saying, Danae? No, I understand. The culture of that, well, that style is, is more gritty when it is thought of as more underground. Is that what you mean? No, it's like, um, with, with the scene, everybody's like, oh, like, we need to go mainstream. We need to keep it underground. Underground is the best. And then on top of that is so many egos within the industry that I work in. It's so many oh, egos. Everybody's that. trying to step on each other's necks. You know, everybody is like, it's like crabs in a barrel. And, the and then the next it is, and Not to interject, the thing about it is, is that House, like deep house music is a yeah. dying, it's like a dying profession. If anything, they should really be like trying to band together to bring it forth more, you know, to bring it more forth than what it is now because it's it's dying. It's dying. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to ask is, um, you've worked with a lot of artists apparently underground and you know more. Do you have um, an opinion on if there is someone actually more talented, they just don't get any play than Geta? I <laughs> I can name about 20. Wow. I can name about 20. I'm not knocking David Guetta. I think he's a great no, producer. No, no, no. But, but you, I'm sorry, my guy. You did not lead the way for um house music in the States. No, you know didn't. what I'm saying? And then, like, like I was saying before, these underground cats are getting mad. But whose fault is that? Is it his fault or is it your fault? Because while y'all doing the crab in the barrel syndrome, these people just slotted right past by you, playing a flag on house music in the name of cultural appropriation. That's and all you know, I gotta say about it. Okay, so I, I'm not big into underground music. Um, it, it seems like, I'll say back in my time of the 80s and 90s, <clears throat> not to reveal my age too much, but it seems that there was there was underground music, but then there is more of nowadays a search for underground music to make it, to make, you know, the industry pop. So it seems like I mean, there's a lot more underground I mean, artists, a, but then, you know, 
It's about to pop anyways because everybody is taking the 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 underground house sound, like especially like with all these pop artists, they're taking that sound in their own. It's like you look at Kanye West, he's sampling left and right. Um, who is my homeboy? Um, uh, Mr. V. Shout out to Mr. V. He just got a song, um, a track placed on a PS4 game. Just oh, wow. dance. He just, yeah, but do you yeah, understand what I'm saying? When, do you understand what I'm saying? Like the 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 genre. The genre of deep house, deep house music is actually really dying in some aspects, though. I mean, like it, nobody it, wants to move it's forward. Incorporated is being incorporated into like this modern mainstream poppy shit. That's how I feel. I don't mind it, but at the same token, the genre of deep house itself is actually being abolished. If you ask me, it's dying. It's not as prominent as it used to be. They're doing it themselves. The people, the people who 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 founded this. Like the people who are supporting this, they're doing it themselves. Name, name an artist. Name any artist that Underground House has um worked with in the past ten years. That's, name one. That's name true. anybody mainstream that they work with in the past ten years. Um, exactly. <laughs> that, that harkens back to the conversation we had when we were in the car. Remember. When we were talking yes. about how, like, some of them don't want to trans, like, like, you know, progress forward or let anybody new in and shit like that, and they still stuck in the past. Like, and exactly. I try to tell you know, because who was I speaking to? I think I was speak. It was um, I think I have spoken to uh, oh god, I forgot his name, but, and he was like, well, he's a DJ. I'm not gonna mention his name right now, but he's a DJ and he's also done music with the Basement Boys. You understand what I'm saying? And um, when I told him like, look, y'all gotta like, kind of like. Like some of this new music, some of this new music is actually very, very good. I was totally like, you would think I, you would think I just poured like gasoline in his fucking nachos or some shit like that. Because he got people <laughs> like, whoa, 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 this this old school house. I said, bro, that's the problem. It's old shit. I'm tired of hearing it. It's the same old shit over and over and over again. I yeah, music is ever ever evolving. That's what's so. I mean, that's why I like music a lot because it's ever evolving. Yeah, and like the the scene that me and Mika are speaking of, like the deep yeah. house scene and the house scene. I like I would say like the deep house scene and the soulful house scene. Some of them don't want to progress or like trans like transcend put what they've already done. They want to stay stuck on what they did and like the old that old music. I get tired of hearing the same old songs. Or the they think Larry Levan is still living. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then when you speak upon it, like, you know, letting in new people like Mika, I know by you being the age you are, they, they consider you like new. You, you follow what I'm saying? They don't want to, like, let anybody yes, know. Like, yes, yes, yes. They you, still they still consider they me. They still want to use. They still look at me like, oh, you don't know shit about this, this, this and that. And that's kind of what makes me straight away from from the house scene. Right. Like, are you serious? It's like. They think that they're 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 holier than now. It's like anybody like that's no, younger. Nobody, no, nobody no, signing no, them. They're not doing any work with anybody. You know what I mean? It's just like the same old, same old. <sighs> yeah. I don't know what to say about. People, well, see, I mean, stuck. I mean, it's sort of like do you progress forward and completely change the art of that that um, genre? Kind of, you know. For example, rap, rap. There's a lot of people now that don't like what's going on with rap and how that's changed. But with oh, rap- Hold on, hold on one second, hold on one second. Hold on guys, hold that thought. Fierce Play, what's going on? Alex Z Ninja, what's going on brother? The original Predator is here. Keisha Kamal, thank you for stopping through. Hit the like button, share the video, let people know we are up and live. Thank you so much. Fierce Play says, uh, Oh, McKinley Miles said, did you get Soul Calibur 6 net yet? No, I did not. I'm waiting for the naked edition. Fierce Play <laughs> said, um, boring life. Fierce Play <laughs> said, some of the creativity and Soul Calibur is insane in that game. Yes, it is. Uh, I want to see everyone naked fighting with swords and blades and bludgeon weapons. Alex Z Ninja, what's up? What's up, brother? Uh, the Predator is here. Keisha Kamal, what's going on, sexy? I will talk to you later. Um, check your messages. I sent you some pics. Um, free play mode says, I got that shit. <laughs> I got that shit. What's up, free play mode? So, yeah, go ahead, Mika. You guys can continue. I just want to give a shout out to the audience. Um, but, um, what you were talking about, rap, but like rap is actually going into the house music sound. Yes, it is. As yes, it is. Yes, it is. You know, so like, yeah, like rap is forever changing, but you know, 
I commend rap for bringing the house music sound like to their world, but like these underground cats, like they forever gonna be sour, they forever gonna be bitter. The the it's extra salty with them. Yes, it is. So so I would say um kind of uh they want to stay in their shell because that's their shell yeah, and they're afraid they're to awesome. burst out because they don't have the creativity. Do you think it's anymore. a creative process? Anymore. They don't have any more creativity, so they want to stay at the same old, same old. But uh, but I'm saying, uh, I'm saying, no, like, with house music, like, there's money to be made off this. Like yes, I said, it like, is. yes, it is. Mr. Yes. V got, you know, his shit on PS4, on a PS4 game. Charisma got his song on a fucking Google commercial. There is money to be made in this yep. shit. You yep. know, Louis keeps winning, keeps on um, getting Grammy nods left and right all day long. Did, um, is now going to into the he's willing great. to evolve. He's willing to evolve. That's yes, cool. like they are willing to evolve, but yet you know, huh? Like it's it's nobody's doing forward thinking, and I think that's what's fucking the the genre up. But you know, like what do I know? Oh, I'm okay. just a DJ. got some comments over here. New Game in Order. Hey, that's right. That's right. Big shout out to New Game in Order. Check out his channel, New Game in Order channel. Very long time friend of mine. Also check out Free Play Mode. Free Play Mode. Very long time friend of mine. Um, let me see. We got some comments over here. He said, did you send me an invite? Um, yo, oh, you want to come on the show? You want to come on the show, um, Free Play? All right, cool. Yeah, come on the show. All right, cool, cool, cool. You can come on the show. Give me a second. The oh, brother Mary. Send it. Alex Z Ninja said, sending support. Exactly. Absolutely. Alex Z Ninja, my man. Fierce Play, Fierce Play says, just got back. Internet cut out. Free play mode said, yeah, okay. Give me a few. You ladies and gentlemen can keep on talking. I'm going to try to see if I can get free play mode, aka Mr. Aaron, on here. And uh, Do I know them? I think you, you might know David. I don't know if you know David. You might know him. I don't know. But you yeah. do know, you, you pretty much know everybody that's in the chat over here, though. Uh, let me see. In the meantime, Kenny, and um, and I want to know your opinion too. Um, your opinion too, Ginger. What did you think of the transgender MMA fighter that uh, beat the daylights out of um, that beat the daylights out of that woman? Yeah, <laughs> geez, you got to see it. No, nah, that shit was fucked up. I watched it. That shit was fucked up. I got the link right here if y'all want to watch it. So First, I want to know. I want to know what did you think of the fight. Two, I want to know. Do you think transgender fe transgender males or females should be allowed into into like you know fighting females? <laughs> Three, I want to like that shit. Three, oh my god! I'm sorry. Oh, it's god. awful. <sighs> This 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 uh this gentleman right here just just, just beat the living he breaks breaks her skull. It's a gentleman and a, and a young lady, or a transsexual. Yeah, here. man, that that shit was crazy, yeah. bro. He literally cracked her skull. I mean, like cracked her skull. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, I saw the article. I didn't quite. I was. It was just sad because um I do jujitsu because it's non-striking. I will watch a good MMA, MMA fight. Or UFC fight, but and I've I've kind of I kind of have a little bit of an interest to see how well I do, but I I like it. I already get enough bruises, and I'm in a non-striking sport of martial art, I should say. And so to see that she got to the point of being that hurt that bad, um, the only thing I could think of is that the ref isn't doing their job. And what's not even that. what I no. Well, no, because then when in, when you watch female MMA fights, the they let it go on and on and on. When then when men start to get really you know show any sign of blood, they cut it. But then for females, I, Ooh. Seen, I'm sorry, I'm watching this again. you know all over the mat, and they still didn't even stop it. And I'm thinking, um, it's it sucks. You know, I think that refs need to be more on their game. If they're, I mean, so that they don't get that injured. The point is to have a good fight to see who's which martial art was originally the best, um, and the refs are there just to make sure it's kind of a safe fight. To and then they got too much. It went over the line. I think. Yeah. I think that they need to watch. Now, personally, hold that thought. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Personally, Mino, 
personally, Ginger, what do you think? Do you think Ooh. it is uh it's okay for a man to fight a woman, a transgender male to fight a female? I mean, honestly, I want your honest opinion. No. Nor do I. Kenny, you're you're give me your thoughts on this. Hell no, nah, you can't. I'm watching, I'm actually watching the fight again, and it's just terrible the it's way brutal. he just really it's does brutal. strikes. It's just it Jesus brutal. Christ. And I, I love a good fight. I love seeing blood. I'm, be, I'm going to be honest with you. I love a good bloody fight. Or I love a good fight. But like that, that right there was just too much. It was right, too, yeah, yeah. Right, right when she take, right when he takes the back, it's just Dunsky just raining down blows left and right hands yes. and elbows. Savage. I don't and, even know. It just, it just, it goes on. That's a man. That's essentially a man. Regardless if he had the work done or whatever the case may be, that's a man. Bring and it down was, the elbows. Like when, every time he hit, I was like this. I was like, mm. like, because I mean, like when he got on, when he like took it to the ground, it was over. I mean, like he was like pounding her. Yeah. The, the rector it, stands there too. Look, look, there you go. Took me a hell of a long, boy. Jesus. <laughs> oh. Geez. All right. So we got so some comments over here. I'm going to get back to you again. guys. We got some Damn comments it. over here. And it says, um. I don't think it's fair, and I agree with you, free, free play mode. I don't even see how they allowed anything like that. That's that shouldn't like, be legal, really. Yeah, that's and that's the, where I was about to get at. That's where I was about to get at. I don't think that fight should have never took um, took place in the first place. Me um, they knew the risk. They knew the risk of bringing Fallon Fox into the fucking ring with a woman. They knew the risk, but and they they decided to go ahead with it anyways. I think that um, like whoever was holding the fight. They should be responsible as well. Absolutely. 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 To me, that was nothing but a freak display or a freak show. It's terrible. Oh, they wanted to see that happen. <laughs> they, someone wanted to see that happen. There's, oh, no, Lord. Way, there's no way if I was on I was in, like on that board, I'd have, I'd have, I'd have, I'd have okay that fight. I'd be like, no, that's a sin. Because regardless of what, that's still a man. That's a man. That's a yeah. man who was trained in MMA. Jiu-jitsu, et cetera. Who knows what other um fatal arts he studied or like practice or whatever. Oh, like beat this up. <laughs> like, like that's what I'm saying. Like because Lord. The minute he took it to the ground, if you were gonna do that, it should have just stopped. The fight should have just stopped. Or like the minute he started right. like overpowering her, they should have just stopped it immediately. This woman, they said she's leaking cerebral fluid. And oh, I have an article, yeah. I have an article. Oh, yeah. Brain juice. Yeah. I have an article right here. I think you posted this um, because I went I went further and did some research on this it. This one has the video I, I just posted. Further, yeah, I did some further research on it, and this article was just like it was it was just sad to read. It was very sad to reading. Um, go over. So give me a second. Let me share this with you guys right here. And it says, "Hold on, I'm trying not to click on anything right there. There we go. Transgender MMA fighter breaks skull of her." female opponent are we becoming too careful not to offend any group of people absolutely mm -hmm. i've never yeah. felt so overpowered that's what she said you hear that she said i never felt mm -hmm. so overpowered in a case you didn't in case you didn't know fallon fox is probably the most known transgender female fighter in the world as a former mma fighter early in her life when she was around five through six years old fallon fox recalls struggling with her gender Soon as she became a teenager, she believed that she's a gay male, that, that she's a gay male. She found out the term transgender, although she was still living as a male. She even got married to her girlfriend at the time at the age of 19 and got a daughter. Soon after she got married, Fox joined the army to support the, her family. After she left the family, Fox went to university, but she left it citing ongoing psychological stress problems from her unresolved gender issues. <laughs> Finally, in 2006, Fallon Fox traveled to Bangkok together with her daughter and did all the necessary surgeries to become a woman. There was a lot of controversy around Fallon's licensing process, and many well and many well-known fighters and con commentators were against Fallon's licenses license. But she had a green light to fight in women's division in MMA fighting. Back in 2014. Fox was fighting her female opponent, Tyka Brent. It would be just another fight for Fallon and Tamika if Tamika didn't suffer serious injuries before she was TKO'd. Everything happened in the first round, and in the first two <laughs> half, it was messy, it was bloody, and it's not as easily viewing for everybody. Uh, oh, I watched that fight. That shit was brutal, bro. Yeah, I mean, TKO, it was like, tranny I, knockout. Maybe it was just me, but I felt as though he was like, 
he was fighting her more than he would than anybody. Oh, like, man. Man, I'm telling you, he he was pounding the hell out of her. Uh, it, what I what I heard now, what I was reading on that nobody wants to get in the ring with her. No woman wants to get in the ring with her. They but, shouldn't. But they it's, should. honestly, and this is just me. No, no disrespect to anybody out there that's transgender, or whatever. That's still a man. That's a man, regardless if he got his got his stuff, you know, whacked off or whatever the case may be. It's still a man. Mm -hmm. That's a man. Testosterone is a very, very strong thing. Um, it's it's still a domineering gene. Um, but I mean, I guess they want to feel empowered as a female and. I don't know. I'm probably saying the wrong thing, but um, what more empowering for a woman than to beat another man, you know, a man's ass. Right, right, right. So if I was a female and I beat some man's ass in the MMA match, I would feel even more empowered than beating another female. Yeah, but there's honestly, there's it, there's no comparison between the two. I'm gonna be honest with you. A no, man, there isn't. Oh, there's oh, a oh, huge difference, but I don't power any woman, even the weakest of men. I've seen them overpower the biggest of women. It's a man. It's just it's a man. It's made to be stronger. He's 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 physically superior in many different aspects, more than women, more than that woman is. And it goes right. on. It goes on further to say here. It says it was messy. It was bloody, and it's not an easy viewing for everybody. Tamika suffered a concussion and a broken skull, and Fallon Fox wasn't stopping until Tamika Brents was finally TKO'd. After the fight, Tamika Brents gave an interview, and she said that she had never felt such power and strength at any woman before she was fighting Fallon Fox. I fought a lot of women, she says, and have never felt the strength that I felt in the fight as I did that night. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I wasn't going to laugh until you laughed, bro. But it's, I'm it's, sorry. I can't answer whether it's because she was uh. a man, not because I'm not a doctor. I can say, I can only say I never felt so overpowered Lordy. in my life. And I am an abnormally strong female in my own right. I still disagree <laughs> with fighting, with Fox fighting. Any other job or career, I say have a go at it. But when it comes to combat sport, I think it's just I think it, I think it just isn't fair. To make a Brent said, and yeah, it goes on to tell yeah. me more of the situation. And this, I think, this is the fight. Oh, right here. I can no longer show video on here because they've um yeah the fight fight with like, no they literally started copywriting sites every even other that sucks that regularly it's, it's it. terrible they won't allow us to um show video anymore hey but but if anybody else noticed before he scrolled up there was like a screen cap of filing fox on top can you yeah. can you yeah. see the bulge look yeah. there's a bulge that, that, yeah. that dude right there that's, that's not a cup yeah that's not a cup at all that's, that's just aggression uh, involved up that's the taters <laughs> that's the taters <laughs> it's the taters. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rough. His balls just like my dog does, man. Stop it's it, rough, sir. Man. It's rough. It's rough. I don't, I, man. If you watch that fight, it wasn't even fair, man. I'm, no, it wasn't, man. It really wasn't. Well, I mean, uh, what's what what is more irritating <laughs> kind of besides funny. that <laughs> is I really, I really think Ugh. that refs. It, it needs to be stressed that, especially rest, as much as unfair fight, that ref was not on the ball at all. Not at I all. Mean, I've seen, yeah, you know, if it looks like there's, I mean, hard. you don't have to wait for the person to be knocked out. If you see them and they are not fighting back for so many seconds, that is done. They're one, they're done. And for you not to see that, either you're um, sadistic and you enjoy seeing someone beat someone like that, Honestly, every a lot of people wanted to see this fight, Ginger. Yeah, well, a lot of people wanted to see this fight. That's that's yeah, gotta be like fucking women out there, or that just wanted. Yeah, to but then I'm, I'm like there's honest. a difference between seeing the fight and then seeing just someone be brutalized to that point. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just, I mean, the first. Well, I used to watch UFC a lot, and I started to get into it years ago, and then I watched the first person break their arm in oh. an arm bar. And it is, it was crazy because his adrenaline was just so, and I was just like, no, I don't watch this to see someone break their arm. You know, I don't mind a good, like good TKO or, but I don't want to see. So, I mean, if I want to see someone be on the street, I will go, I will literally, if I can say it, world star hip hop, 
I watch their their fight compilation, and you see people <laughs> brutalize them to the point of where they're seizuring, and I'm like, oh my god! I'm fight myself. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, they, did you say who the ref was on that fight? It's got to be like I Mario mean, Yamasaki or some shit, man. Nobody, for real. No, nobody even, like, people were in so much shock to where, like, um, the ref was the last thing people were worried about. Believe me when I tell you. That shit was, yeah, that shit was tremendous. Because I know that there are the refs game? that are, like, really well known because they are amazing refs. Right, right. And they were just like, no, just, I don't, we don't care what ref there is. But yeah, I mean, or or the refs could have been like, no, I wouldn't touch this match with a ten foot pole because I don't yeah. agree with it. Exactly. I mean, did y'all see the length of the ass whooping that was put on her? It just went on and on. That's bang, what I'm bang, saying. Bang, like, bang, like, hammers getting knocked. Really... Just Jesus Christ! Like a, uh, it was like on Bloodsport when they killed uh, no kickboxer when it had killed fucking um the guy's brother in the beginning broke his back. It was crazy. It was it was crazy. Boy, I, I couldn't I couldn't believe it. Because I, I, I actually thought like after a certain point they were just gonna stop it. Like the minute he started subduing or like just overpowering her, I thought they were gonna stop it. And no, they just really let him like get on wow. top of her, pound that out. I was like, oh my god! I was like, you fucking her up. Like like somebody stop it. Like you know what I'm saying? Because I went like this at first. I was like, <laughs> then I was like. <laughs> <laughs> the dummy oh, hands on her though, man. Yeah, cause at, first I was, at first, cause I was watching it like this, I was like, man, man. I was like, I wanted to see it. I wanted to see the freak show in certain aspects, but I didn't want to see it like that. I didn't want to see it like that. I mean, I was watching it at first, and I was like, yeah, you know, like fucking up. And like after a while, it was like, oh man, I was like, yo, somebody stop this shit. This shit <laughs> This shit fucked up, bro. Yo, I, I just watched it three times in a row. No lie. That shit was tremendous. Yeah, I, I mean, myself, I didn't think it was funny. I mean, I mean, not in a good way. I'm just saying it was, it's just a shock thing. But that shit was tremendous. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me, let me read a couple of comments, guys. Hold on one second. Free play mode. Oh, Lordy. Find the scientific ramifications. Why don't they happen? Keisha Kamal said, I think it's unfair. McKinley Miles said, I never saw the fight, but I did see the fight between Connor and Molly Wap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right there. yeah that, was, that, was a, that was a rough fight. What did you think of that? Clobbering oh. time, like the thing. Apple Viper that says, was... Hello, TNT. Hey, how are you? Keisha Kamal says, Absolutely. Free Play Mo says, I'm all for transgender rights and such, but I do not believe a male to female transgender should be able to compete in the physical based sport with other women. And I agree. I totally agree. Apple Viper says, TNC, you better put the hands on it for real. Yeah, I see you, Apple Vipers. How are you, brother? I miss you, man. Good to see you. I'll be streaming some gameplay later on this week. <laughs> Replay mode says because the vast majority of the person's life, they were oh, man. Exactly. Taking mm. hormone injections and whatnot will not offset all of the athletic bone density and training mm. done as a man. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I completely agree with you, free play mode. For Lynn mm -hmm. fan says, sue the shit out of everybody, everybody, the shim who beat her down, the venue, the promotion, the manager, the reps, <laughs> everybody in the audience who wasn't <laughs> <out of laughs> great. He was watching the straight killing. He just beat everybody. Word. Keep Yo, and, and real in and, and context too. If that was a real world war, that little lady would have just been dead. She would have got her head beat. Bro, to death. it wasn't even fair what happened. Like I was watching again. I told you I was smiling. It was a mauling. I was smiling at first. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I started. I was like, nah, nah, nah. Come on, ah, oh, man. I'm like, this is too much, man. This is too much, man. And I love a good fight like anybody else, but I was just like, that's too much. Keisha Kamal says, cracking the hell up. Apple Viper said, I wish you will. I did look at the chap, Apple Vipers. Mm -hmm. I'm here, brother. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I hope everything's working out. Good to hear from you, Apple Vipers. But yeah, I mean, like, Mika, what did you think of that? <sighs> I mean, your honest opinion. Your honest opinion. You no, know, I, I I spoke my piece. I was, uh, like I said, like that. I, I don't know how they allowed for that whole shit to happen from and if she does sue, I hope she gets every motherfucking penny. For real, because I mean, I hope she gets it. Absolutely, I agree with. Philem fan said the poor woman was a guinea pig, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I, that's a good way to just, look oh, the next to line of victim Fallon's had. She's bro. beat up more girls too, but this is just the worst oh, one. I, it just wasn't fair. It wasn't fair, man. I, I, I mean, you know, Philem fan says she deserves compensation, and believe. Yeah. 
I'm not yeah. one. I'm so, not so one. To, open. I'm not one to be like, oh, um, this, that, and the other. Women, this, women, that. This, that, and the other. Men, this, men, that. No, in that scenario right there, that was wrong. That was completely wrong. <laughs> it was a killing. Some freak, some weirdo <laughs> up, up, up top wanted to see that fucking freak fight. I'm telling you, he. I, wanted, you know what? I wonder, what is happening, man? Is it okay? I want to go back. Where has happened at? This is I got to know where it's happened at now. Where? I wonder what the committee thinks of all this, because they're just as much in hot water as um, Paladins. They have to be. That that how how did you let that get okayed? When where who who allowed that? Like who signed off on it? Well. I mean, it, it's it's just one. I think it is just a guinea pig, and they were testing things, and so I mean, it's kind of sucky that she ended up paying a higher price, and she might not even be able to. She, well, not might, most likely will not be fighting like this ever again. Right. Yeah. I mean, so you didn't you didn't just lose a fight; you lost a whole career. It's that is that, definitely yeah. damaging, mm -hmm. and so it's it's really sick that you want to not just beat another girl but then allow someone to beat them out of of their living they're and they're right. making a career of something yeah that that's that's crazy because i i don't think she's she's fighting anymore i mean like she she suffered like severe like head trauma like oh, she's going she, to she, they said she was leaking cerebral fluid like you know what i'm saying yeah. like a, a, her skull is like fuck like he crushed it in certain aspects you this know? is oh, like yeah. uh, her her head's just broke pretty much, man. I think she's done. Yeah. It's like what's his name when um cyborg got his face broken by uh, crack MVP. I mean, like you can't crack an egg twice. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. all, it uh -huh. all it takes for somebody to get on the ground and start pounding that nugget again, and it's over, man. Let me just, oh, man. I need to stop watching this thing. That's just terrible. Yeah, that shit is fucked up, bro. And you enjoying it, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's just it's just it's just tremendous. <laughs> Uh, is not woman. a good word to describe that, but yeah, I yeah. get what you're saying. It's like, well, this, this is some Roman gladiator shit. I feel like I'm at the college. See, 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 if people want that, I'm sorry, but if people really want to see brutality, then they just need to gather up some homeless people and throw a sandwich in the middle, you know? And the Yo, I'm a, I'm a big bum fights fan. No, Remember, look, Rufus look, throw a sandwich in the middle with like some sharp, bludgeoning, <laughs> like, object. No, oh, gee, look. Like a steak, no, dude. No, you can't just throw any sandwich there. No, nah, you know you can't just throw any sandwich. No, you put some, you put some coke, you put some dope heads in the pen. Put some dope heads in the pen with some crack. There you go. And like, you know, wait, like wait, wait. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Let, let's stick to that. There'll lightning be a. Let's put some does, coke over does here. Does this sound familiar? There'll be a Capricorn in the middle, and then in the Capricorn there'll be like duffel bags of food. Ooh. And then duffel bags of drugs and alcohol, and then and then some weapons mixed in there. Yeah, and yeah. oh wait, we got a we got a home his hunger games. Yeah man, yeah man, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Does I don't fight. All right, so closing thoughts on this. Um, anybody? I think that um, it was a terrible experiment, and I hope she, if she does sue, she gets you know. Settled for the rest of her life because that was a life changing yep. thing. Yeah, that, that shit was. Yep. Fuck. Yep. She's I never, agree. Never I totally agree. She's never gonna be the same. Maybe she could, she can't even go to the WW. I mean, like the WWE. Now, what's your gimmick? Head broke girl. Yeah, she's done. Kaputski. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said, "Oh wow." Keisha Cabal says, "Oh wow, that's terrible." Put bums in the ring. Yeah, <laughs> bums. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next topic, ladies and gentlemen. We are talking about killing off Roseanne. And how they killed her off on a <laughs> all the shade. <laughs> no. Yo, I, I mean that wasn't just a goner. Yo, that's fucked up. How they that was it. a permanent. We hate your guts, Roseanne, and you are no, never no. coming back. Yeah. No, I mean, like you can kill them all, but like, yeah, I mean, like, damn, it's really you really made this bitch die like she was a dope head. First they thought it was, it was a heart attack, right? And it was like, oh no, she actually OD'd. Yeah. And he found they the pills and shit. Overdose. Terrible. Yes, we did see the But wasn't it on like the last, the very last wait a minute though, wasn't it on like the very last season of Roseanne she was hiding pills? 
on the show. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, well, I mean, you know, I, I think that- you know, I was young when it first the the original series started. And then later on, I was watching um, on how they ended some shows and the original Roseanne series, they ended it really odd, really odd, where I think it was um, they went really downhill and they got a divorce and and it was just a really odd ending. And then they restarted again and networks are just so scared at offending people. Yeah. And com, I mean, it's sad. It's a sad case for comedy because I, I like the way this one comedian said it. Comedy is actually from a dark place. Exactly, it's offensive. Mm-hmm. It's it's offensive. a it's, it's a dark made, place, made, and then take darkness for- and and to be able to have that that common ground of darkness with other people in that in that room is it. It's just something that you're able to kind of bond and laugh over, you know? Right. And so when you take that away, you don't have comedy anymore. Absolutely. And so it's a it's a risk. Yeah, I'm not saying everyone needs to laugh at this joke, but some people might, you know, 70, you know, 70% of people might like that joke and then they'll just continue watching the show or the the whole comedy act. And yeah. I think it's sad that comedy is just ending up dying because everyone wants to be coli- politically correct. They yeah, want to be right, young. Yeah. And they- so check this out. Check this out. We got a couple of comments over here. It said uh, it was a pre- free play mode. said the fight was a mauling. Okay. Yeah. We talked about the bounce. Free play mode says, unfortunately, this was on an experiment. Fallon Fox has fought six times. Um, he said um, free play mode. I guess he was lost, lost how once, though. How Roseanne died. He said he was great. McKinley Miles says, "Have you seen the Connor fight?" Yes, we covered that last on um last on the last show that we did. Mm-hmm. But Fan says, "Yeah, so keep up, drug addict." That's right. That's right. You tell him, keep up. Berlin Fan says, "And made her a drug addict." Yep, made her a drug addict. But like they stated in a, um just a little while ago, Berlin Fan said um she was popping pills on the last ep- last ep- um last, last season. Uh, what's her name? Keisha mm-hmm. Kamal says, "Good for her ass." Free play mode says, "I think it highlighted a serious issue in this country." But, but uh, her death permanent. Uh, Fierce mm-hmm. play says, "It was part of the last episode. She was addicted to the pills." TB, TBJ says, "What's up? What's up, brother?" For Lynn fan says, "They made her die from the same shit that made her t- that made her tweet that night." Oh shit! That's <laughs> mad shade at Roseanne because she talked about she blaming Ambien for that racist rant. Like, really? Okay, we're gonna make you die from a um, drug overdose. That's well, how I mean, gonna keep it. Just, it, I, I don't foresee it going so well anymore because. Um, they just wanted to end it permanently, and to think that if they are they are they still gonna continue without her? Yeah, they already named it the Connors or some shit like that. Yeah, they yeah. named it the and, Connors. And so, it's not gonna work though. I think. Like I read an article. I didn't. I, well, I saw this headline saying that it just feels hollow, hollow without Roseanne because yeah, it did revolve um, around her attitude and her feistiness and the fact that they were unconventional, and so for everyone who likes to be unique when they're faced with something that's an unconventionally unique, that is more of um oddity or you, it's just, Oh no, let's, let's change it. You know, if you want to watch something nice, then what's that? Other, there's other shows that you could, you know, watch, but that's what made it. That's what made it go because they were, they were bickering right. and they were, at Oz, and that showed more of a realness too. But it, like I said, it came from a dark place because there are families and those type of attitude. And just to take the main person away, it's it's like taking what is it, Simba out of the Lion King? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. We have an egg. We have an. Uh, I have a um, an article right here from Rolling Stone from the Rolling Stone website. And it says Roseanne Barr calls characters opioid death grim and morbid. I ain't dead, bitches. I mean, <laughs> after character killed off on the Connors premiere, Roseanne Barr criticized ABC and the Connors after it was revealed on the series premiere that her that her Roseanne character died of an opioid overdose. While we wish the very best for the cast and the production crew of the Connors, all of whom are deeply dedicated to their craft and were Roseanne's cherished colleagues. We regret that ABC chose to cancel Roseanne by killing off Roseanne Connor's character. 
that it was done through an opioid overdose lent an unnecessary grim and morbid dimension to an otherwise happy family show. Barr said in a statement. Now, I've never really considered that like a happy family show because like sometimes they would like delve in the realm of dark shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's well, really, especially in the really end, in the last the seasons, I think I heard yeah. it got really dark. Yeah, it says this was a choice that the net. This was a choice the network did not have to make. Roseanne was the only show on television that directly addressed the deep division threatening the very fabric of our society. Specifically, the show promoted the message that love and respect for one another's parent personhood should transcend differences in backgrounds and ideological discord. The show brought together characters of different po political persuasions and ethnic backgrounds in one unified family, a rarity in modern American entertainment. Above all else, the show celebrated a strong ma matriarchal woman in a leading role something we need more of in our country. In May, Barr was fired and the Roseanne revive, revival canceled after she tweeted a racist remark about former Obama advisor Valerie Barnett. A month later, Barrett, a month later, ABC resuscitated the hit series Sans Barr, Sans Barr, hit series Sans Bar, and rebranded the show The Connors. The show de debuted Tuesday night to respectable though not blockbuster ratings, down 35% from the Roseanne opener, but up a 4% than the revival series finale. And it mm. goes on to mention, I, I, you can't, uh, honestly, that's one of those shows that can't work without the core core character. Perfect, right. Yeah. No. It's not gonna work. I, I give that show maybe three months, three, three to six months, if that, if that. You're being too generous. Well, I mean, yeah. the, the two big shows that I loved in, in the 90s, I would say, are Roseanne and Married with Children. Right. I love I, uh, and with children. They were, I mean, I didn't realize it's so funny because I'm I watch old clips of Married with Children and to just see him when they would have when he when Al would have customers coming into his shoe store, the things he would say to those people, to those women, was hilarious. Yeah, but you can't you like you say that shit now. Oh my God. Now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, toxic, like these toxic, toxic. toxic, 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 toxic you won't last a week with a show like that. Oh, no, fat shaming. Fat shaming. Yeah. Like, Body shaming. <laughs> Body shaming. I'm just like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. It's body shaming. It's Terrific. sexist. It's this. It's that. Oh, gosh. Oh, boo -hoo. I love oh, my my children, though. That's one of my favorite shows. Okay. It was awesome. Yeah, it was. It was a very awesome show. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Okay, Speaking so of that show, what's his face? What's that guy? Ed O'Neill. He's a right. black belt in jujitsu. Yes, Sorry, I had to say that. I just love him for that. Right. <laughs> so check it out. We got some comments over here. And this, this, that's the thing, Ginger. It wasn't meant to be fun. Uh, we'll truly watch the original show. The show is spotlight. Okay, yeah. The original reboot. Okay, yeah. And it turns out the entire neighborhood was the same thing, thing, and that they were okay. sharing pills. Okay. Fierce Place says, funny how things are opposite of what it was 20 years ago. Remember when Married with Children was released and more people watched it because people were complaining about the show? And for Lynn fans says, yes, but that's what worked then. They'll be okay without her. They'll be okay without her. They still have a plenty of put PWT okay. to cover <laughs> without her. I don't think that show was going to go far without her for Lynn fans. I totally disagree. Roseanne was the heart and soul of that show, even though I never really liked that show as a as a staple. But that's just like that's just like making a Space Ghost movie and no Space Ghost is not going to work. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, <laughs> spin -off. it's just it's just not going to work. Off. I mean, she was she was in a way a model of you know, a strong female, female character. They last, last one season, two seasons, something like that. If that. Yeah, it's going to flop. I think it's going to flop. Yeah. Keisha Kamal says, yeah, but she should have washed her mouth. She took herself out of the show. I agree, because you do know that her kids used to keep her off of Twitter, because they, they would take her phone or take her stuff and be like, look, Ma, you got to stop going on here, because she would, like, literally get in the fights Wait, on Twitter. Her kids put on timeout? You know how old people are. Like, my mother, I had to straighten her out one time on Facebook. She was like, this girl put up something. I said, Ma, that's not your page. That's the, that's the news feed. You can't just be going on people's page talking shit to them and expecting them not to, like, respond to you. <laughs> but she was like, but I saw it. I said, yeah, Ma, you see. But it's still, I mean, that's still that woman's page. That's on the feed. She was like, I told her to take that down off of my page. I said, Ma, that's not <laughs> that's not your page so like you know old people in social media 
it doesn't usually work out too well. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's um, who is it? Who is it? Um, it's a another- so, so so you're blaming all races rant on, on Roseanne's uh, what's the word senility be her being senile? That's not, but see, that's the thing, that's not her first time going wild on Twitter. She's gone wild before on Twitter. She like certain motherfuckers, you gotta ignore them. I mean, like, you know, I say yeah. crazy shit up there, like, it's done it repeatedly, huh. What happened? No, you're you're breaking up. Oh, god damn it! Oh, that came in pretty fine right there. That god damn it came in good though. Yeah, but I mean, like you know, I mean, you can't. Some shit you just gotta overlook. But again, it's a it's a it's a, it's a the, the social climate we live in now. The society society social climate is very sensitive. It's overly sensitive, if you ask me. Some shit. I mean, let us. You, well, I mean, it was just an example too. Is she? She that was not that was her character. She wouldn't shut up in the show. She didn't shut up in real life. That's true. And so that's what made it a lot more genuine too. And then you took that genuine out. Exactly. And I agree with free play mode right here. He says sorry, but Roseanne was never a happy family show. No, it wasn't. No, it never really was. was. Like some of some of the episodes I remember watching. I remember one time I think uh, one of the girls almost got like date raped or something like that. Some junk like that. I remember this one episode like that. I remember, I remember that, that one of the friends was drinking real bad and shit like that. It was, it it was never really like, I don't know me. I never really found it funny. I never found it like a uh, a show that I would really rush to watch and stuff. I, again, I would watch Married with Children way before I would watch um, what was that? The Roseanne Show. Roseanne Show to me was just like something I I would just put on or like it would just watch me or whatever. I never really rushed to watch it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, but um, I mean, we got some comments over here. Sorry, but Roseanne was never happy. Found okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. For Lynn fans, they're going to try their best to make it work, just despite her force feed it. Yeah, but you can't make people like you said force feed it. But you can't make people like what they don't like. If they don't like it, they're not gonna watch it. I, right. you have shows. I'm gonna That's be honest with you. There are some no, comedy shows out there. The water. Yeah, you they they if they I don't. This is just my opinion. I don't think the Connors is gonna do that 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 well. I don't think it's gonna do that well at all, especially without Roseanne. I'm gonna be I'm sorry, I, I I stopped paying attention because I was watching Miss eat her banana. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so oh, you lie. Ooh. 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 How did it go, big boozy? Woof <laughs> what was it? <laughs> What else? I love seeing those clips of the yeah. girls are like, yeah, when someone starts yeah. watching you eat a banana, if a guy starts watching you eat a banana and you see the girl about to bring it to her lips and the guy's looking at her and he, she's all looking back and she just goes, boom, <laughs> and takes the big nasty oh, yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Real hard, yeah. Maybe I should start some videos of that. I'll yeah. Some good money off. Exactly. Free well, play you mode. Too, you so I was right. I was right. Free play mode. He said it was one of the shows to deal with sex between teenagers and not simply and not imp- imply it. Exactly. I agree. I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. So I mean, like moving right along. Any closing thoughts on that? They shouldn't have done it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> um. I'll just let, let's just see how the carters go. That's- that shit gonna flop. flop. And you say you're giving it three to six Big months. Flop. Three to I six. Even, if right. that, I mean, nobody gonna watch that shit. Bro, they, they were barely watching Roseanne when she came back out. So they're not gonna watch this shit. Mm. Nope. I forgot he was even uh, on actually until you know this shit started coming on the news. So uh, so <laughs> next up. Next up. <laughs> Oh man, next up, they are canceling Iron Fist and they are canceling. Yay! 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 No more Yay, Danae. Danae. Can I thank you again for making me watch that season? Thank you. Yeah. Piece of garbage. <laughs> Terrific. I'm so happy that they're canceling both of them. Even oh. though the only Wait, thing. Wait, what's that- the other one they're canceling? Luke Cage. Luke Cage, why? Because it's horrible. That's yeah. why. I just had to go. He was so hot. Sure. He was so hot. Isn't that just the basis of the show that he was just no, hot, hard not. body? Oh no, 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 no. That's not the basis of the show. The basis of the show 
is because he was a strong black man. And he was an anti, like kind of like a hero for hire and all that other shit. He was the savior of New York in certain areas. Harlem, Harlem, as a matter of fact, he was Harlem's hero. But I mean, like, he, I don't, I've never liked Michael Coulter as a, uh, Luke Cage, I felt as though he he had no personality. The only thing that carried that show to me was the supporting cast and the villains. That was it. Everything else was just garbage. His acting was horrible. There was one part, and I think I mentioned this in um one of the previous shows we did, where like he was supposed to be under stress and like being electrocuted or something like that. And he goes just like this. He goes, ah. I was like, such horrible acting. This guy is horrible. It just it looked just like that. He was just like this. He was like, ah. I was like awful. Come on. I, I mean, I saw him in, in Jessica Jones, and I I thought he was kind of just flat character, very flat. Yeah, and he is. That's how his acting is like that. He he it's like he's reading off his lines and that he doesn't want to like really, I don't know, it's just something about him. He doesn't, he's he's a nice looking he guy. Hurt. A very nice looking guy, but at the same token, he just reads his lines very like, Yeah, and we're gonna have fun today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, come it on. It just sounds very rehearsed. It doesn't it doesn't make it believable. Yeah, like I mean, like, you know, and again, everybody keeps saying, Who would have been a better one? Who would have been a better one? I said there's a bunch of people that they could have chose to be a better Luke Cage. I mean, like, he's just Land. He falls. They did. They decided. They they casted someone who looked the part, not really could portray it. And I don't really think he looks the part either. I mean, like, yeah. honestly, he's not that muscular. He's like a little bit. I don't know. He's not that muscular as Luke Cage. He's, he's nothing like you. He's nothing like you. Whatever, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, this, this work. Claudia would accuse you of being gay somehow. Of hey, course, of hot course, body. Of <laughs> look at the anytime, body. Anytime, any two yeah. time I mentioned like a nice a person is nice looking at this kind of but it was like, oh, <laughs> goodness, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you said he was handsome. <laughs> 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 yep, yeah, that's Claudia. That's yeah, Claudia. Claudia is not. No I show any. I show any type of weakness or softness. He was like, "Yeah, you need to be reconditioned on the man. <laughs> <laughs> reconditioned." <laughs> like, yeah, they're canceling that fucking garbage, man. And I have Iron a fish, bye. No, I have Iron a right fish. here. I have I a article right here from um Gizmodo. That I'll share with you guys. And the thing about it is, nobody is sad to see it go. Everybody's just like, oh, well, yeah, 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 all right. But <laughs> I, it, it's also reasons why they're doing that, why they're canceling a lot of the Marvel shows on um on um Netflix and shit like that, because Disney is doing their own thing now. They had they're having their own streaming service, so that's what's happening. Oh no! Hopefully, they don't keep the garbage Iron Fist thing going. No, no, they 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 gotta let that die. And before they go, I'm gonna give them one last thumb down on Netflix. I haven't done it yet. Yeah, I'm just gonna yeah, I, I, I haven't even <laughs> got to. I watch it. I'll let you bite the bullet on that one. And I'm just gonna give it thumbs down it. I'm just gonna thumbs it down. I'm like, just, just, and I haven't even watched um, Iron Fist. Yo, I'm, so, hey, dude, you I don't. don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say don't. I don't, don't, know, don't I, do I, I, I still love the first season of Jessica Jones after, because after, I have a personal crush. Kenny, I, I have a huge. Well, look at this picture of Iron Fist right Kenny. there. It looks like a, a a stock photo you find on Google, man. That's terrible. I want to punch him. <laughs> <laughs> Extra regular you cash. Shopping for a new frame at Hobby Lobby or or Jones or Michaels, and then you see that stock photo. Yeah, like I, want punch, I want to punch him in his mouth and comes in the frame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would love to punch him in his mouth and then stroke his hair. I'd be like, oh my god, what happened? It's just a, <laughs> the entire cast, just extra regular looking and so boring. I just, I, I think it should oh stay my goodness, sleep. Y'all are I'm, so mean. I'm kind of an insomniac, mean. so I put this on a sleep. You, you, know, you know, if you were to punch him, Kenny, listen, Mino, we we know soft people when we see him. You He'd know, disintegrate in the dust like a vampire off blade. You know, Ginger, you know if you punch this guy, Kenny, you know if you punch this guy, he would start crying after a while. You know it. You can look at him and tell. He's very He looks small. like a barista. He was supposed yeah. to make me coffee in the morning. I would punch him and then stroke his hair. I'd be like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hit you. But I could work at Starbucks. Stop it. He makes great coffee. All right. So look, check it out. It says, Holy cow, Iron Fist has been canceled by Netflix. <laughs> it says, it says, <laughs> they thank God. Yeah, right. <laughs> 
if you were one of the people incredibly excited for the possibilities left open at the end of Iron Fist season two, we have some very bad news. Netflix just canceled the show. Yes. The first Marvel show to get the axe. Marvel's How's that bad news. Go ahead. This is excellent news. Yeah. Marvel's Iron Fist will not return for a third season on Netflix. Netflix and Marvel said in a statement released to Deadline, everyone at Marvel Television and Netflix is proud of the series and grateful for all of the hard work on our incredible cast, crew, and showrunners. We're thankful to the fans who have been who have watched these two seasons and for the partnership we've shared on the series. While the series on Netflix has ended, the immortal Iron Fist will live on. This comes yeah, as a shock, honestly. While both seasons of Iron Fist had, had fans, many felt the subpar first season was much improved upon in the second season. It's especially since it ended with a massive cliffhanger. It had just made Colleen Wing the newest Iron Fist and her part and her what? And her close partnership with Misty Knight. Now, Misty Knight, I would love to see more of her. I love Misty Knight. Misty Knight strongly hinted that the Daughters of the Dragon might soon make their Marvel debut. You have to assume this. Well, so if they cancel Iron Fist, doesn't that mean, and Luke Cage, that I don't foresee any more Jessica Jones or um, well, no, Daredevil. Really by themselves. They can, Daredevil doesn't really need to exist with Luke Cage and Iron Fist. If anything, yeah, but then no, weren't they weren't they doing no, seasons no, no. so that they could combine them like the Justice League? Yeah, well, no, they might they might bring them back and make Heroes for Hire with um, Luke Cage and um and Iron Fist. Terrible. I don't know. 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 He says you have to assume the creative ended the, the creatives ended season two like that because they were expecting to come back. However, that will not be the case. There's no word of any of these characters will continue to be part of the universe or how it will work out exactly. It always felt like Iron Fish, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Dead Devil were kind of a package deal. Though the news could be reviewed could be viewed as an opportunity to place Iron Fist characters in other places with Netflix shows to keep their plots moving forward. There's also Disney's upcoming streaming service. Again, that's what I was telling service which deadline hints could be an option either way the immortal iron fist will live on as a statement said this is the situation we'll continue to monitor but for now feel free to speculate about what this means for the future absolutely and, nothing yeah iron fist Another belongs is, in the asmr category terribly boring. one is why luke cage was canceled by luke netflix <laughs> <laughs> i had her back-to-back -back article <laughs> why why and why <laughs> Okay, for the second time in as many weeks, Netflix has canceled one of their Marvel original series. Iron Fist was the first to go last week, but now it has been announced that Luke Cage is also done after just two seasons. The move came as quiet as shot as reports pointed towards a third season renewal. So what happened? Netflix and Marvel first announced their partnership back in 2013, and it was smooth sailing in the early days. As their output grew, just not just with Marvel, but as a service overall, the quality of some of these shows dipped. Luke Cage has been a surprisingly div divisive series. As the first half of season one was touted as some of Marvel and Netflix best contents before the second half proved to be a bit of a disappointment. The same could be said for season two, but in reverse, since it ended on the tantalizing note of Luke Cage, Mike Coulter essentially becoming the villain, the end point, the ending point for the character was obviously set up for a third season, but now that isn't going to happen. It was announced last night that Luke Cage has been canceled. After two seasons, in similar fashion to the cancellation of Iron Fist, Marvel and Netflix issued a joint statement about the decision. Everyone at Marvel Television <laughs> Netflix is grateful to the dedicated showrunner, writers, cast, and crew who brought Harlem's hero to hire the past two seasons. What the fuck is going on? Everybody all right? Come on. Come on. I'm going to take a fucking meal. We're live, guys. Go, Darren. Go in your room, please. Go in your room. Go in your fucking room. Hold okay. on. I'll be right back, guys. All right. All right. I'll, I'll be right back. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. Right. I like the statement that came with Iron Fist cancellation. There was no statement that the series of the characters will live on. This has made many fans wonder why Luke Cage was canceled in the first place. Viewership could be one of the factors behind the decision, but it's impossible to say since Netflix doesn't release any of these figures to the public. According to THR, the main reason behind the cancellation was creative differences. There's no word on what exactly the disagreements were or on what level between Marvel, Netflix, or creative system the issues stem from. And it goes on to kill, you know, tell you like this, that, and the other, what happened, and what might happen, and uh, following the season two, but yeah, it's done. 
it's done. That's a good thing. That's you think he's gonna kill him off in the universe, period. Like have Thanos oh, snap him out and get him because of that. Cage is that dude. I mean, but Hope I mean, so. like, I mean, they'll, they'll just find ways to at least kill off Iron Fist. Have Thanos snap him out of existence. Yeah, right. God, I hate like, what, what, what are your thoughts on it, um, Minnow? Yeah, um, I know. I know. I know. Thanks today. Appreciate it, bro. It's, just, it's one of the best things I ever saw. You know, took away X amount of time for my life, buddy. It took. Well, I mean, if it if it was crappy shows and especially flat acting, uh, they said you said in that oh. article that there wasn't any specific reason. Well, because it apparently wasn't worth it. If it wasn't worth them giving an actual reason, then it wasn't worth the show running anymore to them. That's true. And that says a lot. That's true. And, so, oh, I mean, Iron Fist, I think Iron Fist, people were disappointed in front of it from the get-go, and they just could never get it rolling because they decided to try to be unique, and they just fell flat. Because, I mean, look, you guys are practitioners of the martial arts, just as well as myself. What did you think of, like, have you ever watched any of the Iron Fist, um, um, Ginger? No, I've, no, not really. I... I haven't been able to sit down and enjoy that one because kids shows are more important, apparently. Right, right, right. <laughs> Kenny, um, what did you think, bro, when it came to Iron Fist fighting? They did a lot of camera tricks, like they, they'll zoom in on him and do shaky cam to hide the fact he's kind of didn't know what he's doing. He's slow because remember the first the first Iron Fist, he had this really weird Tai Chi slow thing he was doing. Like these really big wavy kung fu crap. Now all they do is they zoom in and do these fast cuts, so it's not only boring but it's hard to watch. Right. So it, it's pretty jarring to look at too by itself. Mm. Like, it's like, it's because they're trying to. They're apparently uh, a lot of action films are trying to design their fight scenes like John Wick. Right. And right. Right. It just doesn't, so. They changed a lot. They like upped the game a lot doing the action in John Wick and they they can't imitate that. It takes a lot of hard work and people like Keanu Reeves puts all that hard work in, you know, and right. and not only do they need a hard work, but they need a good choreographer and when you when, <clears throat> when you just do a lot of camera shots, people like to see the the form and the action. They don't want to see the fist going in the stomach you know, in slow mo, they want to see him do these amazing things. Right. You know, in the in the comics, you got to see it on paper, in a way, but then when you can't translate that he was an amazing fighter on film, then it's just it. Well, that's what we want to see. We want to see action. We we don't want to see a close up shot of someone getting punched in the face. We want to see them their form and their movements and their how graceful they were and how, wow, that was such a smart move. And that was an amazing thing that he could do it. And like I said, John Wick changed a lot in the action game and right. it's hard to imitate. Right. Well, I always thought they made Iron Fist fight wrong. Like he, I was in the books and then uh, even the video game, when, what was he on Marvel Capcom? He had kind of like a Bruce Lee vibe to him. Like he's exactly. fast and, you know, quick jabs, like just, just like a Bruce Lee do with the mask. So when you expect that and you, you see this kind of shit, it's like, you know, it's it's a total one eighty from it. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a sad thing. I mean, I I love action films. So, um, like I, I recently saw, I was kind of behind on the game. I recently saw Upgrade. I still oh, did you seen like that. it? Did you like it? It, it was it you. was it was a fun storyline. Um, at, it was kind of an, kind of an obvious story arc. And the action was crazy, uh, but I think it totally just lost it in the end when they tried to throw in this twist so that it wouldn't be as predictable as it was written. And I still, I still enjoy that film. I thought it was great. I thought it was absolutely, I enjoyed it. I like stuff by Blum, Blumhouse Studios anyway, but no, continue. I liked the actor. I haven't seen him before. But did I think he did a really good job his acting was a lot, a lot better than Luke Cage. He wasn't flat. I mean, right to 
to act as if you're being controlled by a robot and then just being able to be set in the back of your mind, just watch what happens. It's kind of a crazy concept, but then to actually pull it off was kind of fun. Right. I agree. I agree. But like I said, I think it could have been a better twist. Um, I think they got caught up in the awesome action. And yeah, the story, I mean, it was an interesting twist, but I think it just didn't make sense, really. Mm. I enjoyed it. But I still enjoyed it. I mean, it was still fun, but like I said, it was, I wouldn't mind seeing him again. He was a nice, I was like, he's a cute, he's hot. <laughs> you know who I thought it was at first? I thought it was Tom Hardy. I like from the very so first, too. in the favorite, previous, I thought, yeah, it, was I thought it was Tom Hardy. Yeah, he favored Tom Hardy, didn't he? He did. Yeah, I thought it was Tom Hardy. And oh. then I saw Tom Hardy again. I'm like, oh, you're you're Tom Hardy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you're Tom Hardy. So I'm I want to see him in Venom. That will be amazing. You didn't see Venom yet? No. What the hell are you waiting for? It's good, man. I, I went to my birthday and I decided to party instead of seeing a movie. Oh, okay. And so, so I'm yeah. Moving right along, moving right along. We have, hold on, hold on one second. Hold on, hold on. Moving right along, we have Toy, no, Movie Pass finally gets sued. I don't know about you guys, but I was definitely a holder of Movie Pass, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, Movie Pass, what it would allow you to do is see unlimited movies forever. You can see. One movie every day for a week or something like that. And I definitely beat the hell out of it because I, I, I knew it wasn't going to last. I didn't even see how they were making money doing this shit. I really didn't. I didn't see how they were making money and I didn't care. So I just beat the hell out of it. I'm going to be honest with you. I was watching movies left and right everywhere. So fast forward to today, the they um, pretty much went bankrupt. I wouldn't say went, went bankrupt, but like their shareholders... The shareholders want 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 their money and they don't have it or they want they want to see results and they don't have you know anything to produce for them so what they essentially uh they essentially did was they started getting real scummy like people were canceling their memberships because what had happened was is that at one point n- people with movie passes weren't able to see any movies because movie pass didn't have any more money and because all you would do is pay ten dollars a month and you can watch movies every fucking day out the week which is yeah, like that's- completely it, it, it's, I mean, it sounds, it sounds it's like a for consumer, but as from a business perspective, how the fuck are you maintaining that? A ticket alone, an adult ticket alone costs like 16 to $20 sometimes. You know what I mean? You know what? Hello? That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It costs 16 to $20 sometimes. So, I mean, like, what happened? It just got out of hand. So, you know, what they would what they were doing when people were um weren't able to go see their see, see movies with movie pass, they went and um they went and um tried to uh like take their accounts, like you know, like close their accounts. Movie pass wouldn't let you close their close your account. You go to close your account, they'd be like, Yeah, 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 the account would be closed, but it wouldn't be closed and they would still keep charging you. So fast forward to today, the movie pass owner was sued by his shareholders as business model as the business model faltered. And we have an alt we have an article here from Bloomberg.com uh, that tells pretty much how the situation went. And it's it's going bad. It's going real bad for them. Very bad. They started getting they went from being like these awesome people to where like they were just like these scumbags, I'm telling you. But I loved movie pass when I had it. Right now I'm using the AMC A list thingy where like you can see three movies for twenty dollars a month, three movies a week or more twenty dollars a month is well worth it. And no, I'm not being um anything on concessions uh, like a discount. Yeah, you get you get you get um you get rebates off of concessions, all that stuff. Like I'll be getting free popcorn, I'll get free sodas, hot dogs and stuff like that. I'll eat the meat and throw the bread and leave it on the on the floor and shit like that. I'm scum. Nice. Where where you go (laughs) today? Where to go? (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So it says hey, Movie Pass owner sued by shareholders as business model falters. It says the owner of Movie Pass Inc., the hard pressed movie theater ticket subscription service, is facing two class action lawsuits alleg- alleging investors took a bath because the company didn't Ooh. complain about being unable they to. took pay. a bath, huh? <laughs> yeah, it took a, a bath. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> I don't theater. know. I mean,. You know, you you give money to make an investment, and if that investment doesn't pan out, 
you can't sue for that money back uh, because no, it went into the line all the way around. Because and because I'm the, like, no, you can't. I'm sorry. No, because no, because the shareholders kept asking, like, look, what is the plan? How are you making money with charging only ten dollars? It doesn't. It doesn't add up. They were like, yeah, yeah, we got it, we got it, we got it. We got it. Yeah. If they agree with the business model at first. No, normally when you're going for business, you want to put a business model out there so that they know what they're paying for and to fact to, to, to not have a business model and then someone give you money be, without you having one. It's sort of like, um, you get what you pay for you, you. Why did you not make sure they had a business model? I might not be getting it. If I'm not, I'm sorry, but it's sort of like, you know, Eating the steak. You can't not pay for the steak. Yeah, but I mean, these motherfuckers, they, they, they said that they were able to do this, this, that, and the other, and they messed it up. So you can't play with shareholders. You can't play with shareholders because they're big people with big money. And like when you don't and do it. And they have big lawyers, and that's that, the difference. Exactly. 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 So it says the owner of Movie Pass, the hard pressed movie theater ticket subscription service, <laughs> is facing two class action lawsuits alleging investors took a bath. That right there keeps making me laugh. The wording, though. <laughs> took a bath because the company didn't go clean about being unable to pay its bills. Movie Pass parent Helios and Matheson Analytics Incorporated omitted and misstated its financial prospects in press release when it touted a sustained a sustainable business model. The shareholders claim in lawsuits filed in Manhattan federal court, the company's financial troubles became apparent in July when it disclosed that its service was interrupted because it couldn't keep up with the merchant payments. Hillis and Matheson had a first quarter loss from operations of 107, 107.7 million compared to the loss of 4.4 million a year earlier. The value of his shares have has been nearly wiped out, falling 99.8% in the past month to less than five cents. Oh my God. To stop the financial drain, MoviePass stopped offering unlimited movie tickets for $9.95 a month. Exactly. As a, as a Wednesday, movie bubs can only see three films a month instead. Three films a month. Like, come on, bro. The news of interrupted service. Help the investment community understand what insiders clearly knew or would have known in the absence of recklessness. That there had been no reasonable basis to believe that Helios could be profitable relying on the movie pass business model, according to a complaint filed August 13th. Okay. All right. No problem. Shareholders what? in both suits complain that the company lied to them by keeping grim finances secrets and releasing misleading information. Both lawsuits, including one filed August 2nd, named Helios Chief Executive Officer Theodore Farnsworth and Chief Financial Officer Stuart Benson as defendants in the complaints. The company declined to comment on the lawsuits. And it goes on to further explain how um, movie pass, and you can catch this out, check this um, on Bloomberg.com on how they uh, swindle people and the shareholders are mad and they're about to get fucked and um, it's going bad. So yeah, that's the way it's going to go. So yeah, we're about to lose one of our co-hosts right now because she has to go tend to her family duties. We had a pleasure having you on the show, Minnow. I mean, Jen, I'm, wonderful so to, being I'm, here. So, I'm so used to calling you Minnow. I'm so used to calling you Minnow. I'm sorry. I, it's all right. But Ginger Snap, it was a pleasure, sweetie. Please, you definitely have to come back. You're one of the founding members of TNT Photon HQ. I wouldn't have started this and would have been able to do this without you, along with Kenny and a few other people. Uh, I'm glad to have finally been on the show. That was all my, you know. Yeah, so when, oh, yeah, yeah on, 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 a, on a different note, if you want to fight me, we could do this whenever you're ready. I'll break your jaw. What you want to do? I'll take these two small fingers and we'll go right up your nose. That's what's up. That's what's up. Your head That's, and what's up. You. That's what's up. You see that nice little jawline? I'll all rip your do rag off and then mess your hair up. And all of do rag. You know that's how we do. That's how we do. And when I fight, you see, I take the piercings out. I take the do rag. I'm gonna choke you with your own do rag. Just you watch. Cause see, this is how me and Mino communicate. I love you, baby. Mwah. Sleep well, sweetheart. Yeah. So, um, Kenny is down to you and I, brother. So what we got? What we got? We got. Uh, we got. What's the next one? What we got here. We got uh, Toys R Us. Oh, yeah. Let's come back. Jeffrey's and Toy Box. And now Jeffrey's Toy Box. And people are pissed the fuck off. But former employees, <laughs> employees man. man. Yeah, former employees, man. The they are mad as fuck, bro. They are mad. Oh, man, we got some comments over here. Hold up. 
Somebody said free play mode said fight. Cristiano said, what up, Danae? What's up, Mr. Cristiano? How you doing? Not that Luke Cage, he was not that dude. For Lin fans, as casting is a problem for them. She also said the only one they got right was Daredevil. And Daredevil and Punisher. Pu Daredevil and Punisher. Punisher's good. Uh, comic book guy says his fist glows. Um, for Lin fans says if they actually put the time and work into their casting, not just the looks, but actually choosing people with decent stature and skill. Exactly. I completely agree with you, for Lin fans. Fierce Play says should have learned from Daredevil. Daredevil has some excellent fight scenes. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. And like you, like they looked, they looked real in certain aspects. Even though it was choreographed, it looked real. Comic did book you catch the new Venom season today? Comic book guy says Venom was great. Yeah, I enjoy Venom. Cristiano says, people tell me I look like Tom Hardy, girl. Tom Hardy, girl. <laughs> Free Play Mode says, I saw so many movies during the summer. I saw all that I wanted to. And then some, yeah, I was beating the hell out of that movie pass. I ain't even going to lie. I knew that was going to go under. I knew it was going to go under. So I just beat it up. I knew it was going to go under. My Spidey sense was ringing with that movie pass shit. Free Play, man, free, free play um, Mode says, false. You can sue. He's right. Free play mode says if the people do not deliver a solid business plan. Exactly. And that's what I was trying to explain to her because they kept asking them like, yo, how are you going to sustain this business? How are you going to sustain this business? We need to see some numbers. We need to see this. And when they wasn't showing like when they when they let out that cry for help, like, oh, we're going to get six million to pay off this. Ad, and that's when them shareholders started like, man, it was like, oh, no. Oh, no. You playing a dangerous game with my money, bro. Um. Free play mode says, and you falsify what you are doing exactly. When you take other people's money, you have to be upfront with those people about what exactly you are doing. If you falsify that, you can be sued for fraud or entering a business uh, and entering a business agreement. Exactly. Under false pretenses. Absolutely. He's completely right. Free play says, that's true. Mistress Mino trying to take my identity. <laughs> yeah. She calls you cinnamon bear, brother. She calls you cinnamon bear. But yeah, um, you got Toys R Us here, and the people are pissed off about Toys R Us, um, the situation where they're coming back and stuff like that. Me and myself, I'm happy about it, but in certain aspects, I totally understand about the employees and people that were working for them and how the, the business structure, is, they're coming back, but they're not coming back as people think they are. You know what I mean? Like me, when I first saw it, I got all giddy and happy about it. But then when I read on, read further on how it was supposed to go, I was like, oh, man, it's going to be some bull. But then a pop-up like, store? What are they doing? They're going to do pop-up stores, yeah. and they're basically going to be doing things where so um, to, stay, <gasps> to stay in the safe zone. And then, like, as clientele bills or, like, if the business flourishes, they're going to make it, you know, they're going to do it a little bit more. Um, how can I say? A little bit more, you know, like, they're going to pretty much branch off and have some stores and stuff like that. And it says right here, Toys R Us is coming back with a new name, but not everyone is happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> of Last week, we learned the lenders responsible for Toys R Us had canceled their bankruptcy auction, meaning that they were planning on attempting to come back. And already the company has revealed their new plans, but not mm -hmm. everyone is happy about it. The Toys R Us branding, including the name and the mascots, were retained by the lenders. While the company couldn't make it work, the investors think they have figured out a way to make more money, and it involves bringing back the iconic giraffe. Jeffrey the giraffe has been the Toys R Us mascot for a long time. But now he we looks fucked up in that picture, too. I know, look at him. Damn. Man, I want to see what the fuck he had. Look at him. Like, oh, I, say, look. He was like, oh, I took a trip. <laughs> yep. He put it, man. You bet, uh, I bet you look at Jeffrey's mouth. He got like three teeth. He's been on, <laughs> yeah. he's been on a binge, man. Oh, yeah, Jeffrey. Eyes. Oh, my God. Yourself, sir. Yeah. And look, the guy behind him is his deal. He was like, yeah, you think this is good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, yeah, I just caught him sniffing. Look at the lady. Oh, Lord. Dude, like, get your fucking hand off of me, lady. <laughs> Jeffrey. Jeffrey is so done. The rest of us branded, including the name and mascots, were retained by the lenders. While the company couldn't make it work, the investors think they figured out a way to make more money, and it involves bringing back the iconic giraffe. Jeffrey the giraffe has been the Toys R Us mascot. Has been the Toys R Us mascot for a long time, but now he's going to be the main attraction. The Toy Store pre released a press release on their website <laughs> the, the to be a rim, imagine <laughs> <after> the <laughs> Dallas tour <laughs> and Jeffrey himself was back from <laughs> at least that's it looks what, like an Illuminati ritual oh my god 
<laughs> look at him. Yeah. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> like, that's that dope. Right there, like, oh my god, I need some water, please. Lord. <laughs> I need some water. That the giraffe was all around, <laughs> there, and it was announced that Toys R Us is being officially rebranded as Jeffrey's Toy Box. According to the listing at the Dallas Toy Previews website, Jeffrey Toy Box is a wholesale toy distributor and intellectual property company whose focus is on popular play patterns across trusted brands that kids and parents love. Jeffrey's Toy Box is a fully outfitted organization with design, development, and global sources expertise. Portfolio includes popular brands like Journey Girls, Fast Lane, True Heroes, You and Me, Imaginarium, Just Like Home, and more. I don't know none of those. All my favorites. Yay. Yeah. You need Mattel. <laughs> you need NECA. You need Hasbro. Come on, bro. You need what they gold. doing, man? They're okay. yeah, like, Come on. If you don't got those, you ain't going to be seeing me. And I love, even though I was a toy distributor at one time, I, and yeah, I still sell toys. You know, I still sell toys from time to time. But I mean, there's nothing for me. Like, there was nothing like, you know, for me going into a toy store, and actually like grabbing toys, uh, pulling out action figures, stuff like that. You know, it harkens back to a good time in my life when I was a kid and my mother or whoever, we would go to the toy store and my uncles would send me there. Like, my uncle went and got me my first set of Silver Hawks and all that other stuff from Toys R Us. But, um, yeah, you got to get some better names than that, bro. I don't know. None of these motherfuckers. Jeffrey's Toy Box, including <laughs> these guys. I know Imaginarium. They make like those, like those Batman sets, but like they're like really like kid friendly. Like I don't know. It, 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 I know what Imaginarium. Is. They make like. But these sound bootleg though, man. Look, look yeah, at that. Yeah, true like, girl and the true heroes. That sounds this fake. Stuff, this is stuff I could find in like the dollar store and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, what none of that? Oh, hey, whatever happened to, to Jeffrey not looking cracked? Even the drawing looks cracked out, man. <laughs> Give him regular eyes, the man. Eyes, bro. The eyes. He got the blue eyes. Look. <laughs> he got them peepers, man. Oh, oh, oh. Smoke some weed. Drink some beer. Damn. Some coke. <laughs> Do some coke. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, Jeffrey. Jeffrey burked out right now, man. But yeah, we just got to see how this turns out. Hopefully, it'll turn out good. I'm hoping. But, it hey, do you remember not too long ago, uh, somebody said that KB Toys, like, uh, I have the license to KB Toys, and I'm bringing it back. What happened yeah, to yeah, that? Whatever happened to him? Whatever happened to him? Yeah, whatever, it, you, know. you figure now would have been a good time to launch it right before yeah, all this shit. Yeah, like, come on. It's, it's going on November. Like, Christmas time will be coming up anytime soon. Like, yeah, holidays. Happened, what happened to the big idea? I mean, like, I saw him posting it up there. Oh, I got KB Toys, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. Man. Uh, yeah, we, I mean, like, you know, people aren't happy. Like, you know, you saw on Twitter, it was a bunch of people up there like, oh, well, since you guys are coming back into business, can I have my job back? Yeah, I would have hated to be an employee there, oh, man. For, for, oh. Yeah, so people are pissed, man. They are. Can you imagine having tenure at Toys R Us and this shit happens? Good Lord. Mm. Good, yeah. good, uh, good luck to everybody. <laughs> That's messed up. Best of luck, man. You know, I want to wait for Mika to get back because I want her to um go over the uh, Halloween show with the Halloween movie. Did you see it yet, Ken? No, I wanted to. I, I wanted to hear y'all take on it. Oh my god! Looking forward to that. I wanna. I really want to do it with her because um I want to know her honest opinion on this shit. I really want to know her honest opinion, and I wanna. Hey, Dahlia, how are you? What's going on, Dahlia Dark? It's good to see you. I heard of. The pop-up McDowell from Coming to America. What's up, Dahlia Dark? It's good to see you, baby. Dahlia Dark, do you have a webpage? Do you have a um YouTube channel? Because if you do, I can direct people there. Believe me when I tell you, I will Dahlia Dark has been a very good friend of mine. She's into movies. She does uh movies, photo shoots. She's amazing, absolutely amazing. But yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know. I really I, you know what? I'm gonna send, I know she's probably um busy right now but i'm gonna send mika i mean yeah i'm gonna send mika a message and see if she um see if she's coming back so that that way i can um i can we can um exchange thoughts on what on that halloween movie i'm hoping a positive thought because i was actually looking kind of forward to seeing that yeah yeah you might enjoy it. You might enjoy it. Mika, are you coming back? I hope everything's okay. Yeah, but in the meantime, we got to keep moving on. 
So I happened to watch DC's Titans on their streaming on DC streaming service. Is it as cheap as the trailers made it out to look? Bro, I want to know. Bro, <clears throat> I'm gonna give you my honest opinion on DC Titans. I actually liked it. Really? Even, even with the hood wig shit she had on. Huh. I actually liked it. It's violent as fuck. It is violent as fuck. Is this tied to anything existing or is it its own thing, kind of? It, 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 it's tied. No, it's, uh, it's 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 within the DC universe, but it definitely... um. It def like, is it to the movies? No, 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 no. It's its own entity. It's like dealing with the DC universe and then actually incorporating other heroes. Like they have Hawk and Dove that have popped up. I mean, but how about the rest of the DC shows without the like Arrow in them? Is can't get to that shit. Um, they make mention of it, but like DC is actually, but like these these uh these channels that we've known, these mainstream channels like CW, HBO, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Everybody's making their own little separate little streaming service, so therefore these channels are definitely going to start losing a lot of um a lot of shows, and I don't know what they're going to do. It's yeah. like. It's, it's going to be crazy because Disney has their own streaming service coming out. DC has their streaming service out. Uh, Warner Brothers is pushing out their own streaming service. So, I mean, like, it's going to get to the point where, like, it's going to be like you're going to be spending just as much on these streaming services as you would cable TV, you know, if this keeps up. But, I mean, like, who knows? Pretty much getting it already, for real. Yeah, because, I mean, like, you know, ever since them seeing, you know, ever since they saw, like, Netflix making money off of, like, the streaming stuff, they're like, fuck it, we're going to stream our own shit now. You remember Hulu used to be completely free back in the day? Yeah. Like all of it was free movies and TV shows. All of a sudden, they slapped a subscription on it. Like, oh, what the fuck? Overnight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you know what? Dolly and Dark, you definitely got to come on the show one day. I would I would love to have you on here and, like, you know, you can tell everybody what you do, what you, like, your, your wonderful talents that you possess and everything that you have on your channel, your music videos. She is a wonderful person to know. Definitely check her channel out. Yeah, he says I miss um Fierce Play says I miss Twitch TV. But she's a she's been a very long time friend of mine. Dahlia Dark is absolutely amazing. Dahlia Dark, if you get a chance, definitely um give me your um your Twitch and your Instagram and every, I mean the your YouTube, your Instagram and everything. And um you can see some wonderful images up there. I mean, like she takes professional photos, she's cosplay, everything. She's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. I've been, I mean. I've been wanting to have Dolly Dark on the show for a very long time, but we definitely have to. Um, we got to sit and talk. We got to sit and talk, Dahlia. We got to sit and talk. But yeah, DC Titans, absolutely love. So far, I'm enjoying it. That's surprising I'm, to hear. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean myself. You know how I. You know how I put up a big post like, "Oh, this is disrespectful. I don't like the way they gave her this hood wig and everything like that." Now. Did they, did they put like special effects that just kind of made it look better in motion or what? Well, you know what? When you watch it, you see why she's wearing it, but it come it, it eventually changes. You'll see what I'm talking about. But it's a very, very dark series. It is not for children at all. Not for children at all. It's that kind of surprised me because I was expecting something like one of these regular CW shows. Yeah, me too. Me too. That's what I was expecting. I like, and I watched it. Someone was like, "Nate, go ahead, watch it." So, you know, I subscribed to the DC service, whatever the case may be, watched it. And I was like, yo, this ain't half bad. I'm actually, I haven't watched the second episode yet. Because the second episode, from what I understand, has already been released. I'm going to watch that maybe after the show. But um, it's definitely worth a watch. I mean, I'm not disappointed. I, I'm so, put it like this, it kept my interest. It kept my interest. And I think you'll like it um, because... The guy they got playing Dick Grayson, what's his name? Brenton Thwaites, is, I think his name is. Brenton Thwaites. Um, Thwaites. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. Then you have, um, then you have uh, what's his name? Tegan Croft. She plays Raven. And you got to got anybody really to play Raven. But I mean, like the, the guy, the, the people that they have besides Starfire. Now, Starfire, I still do have a problem with because Starfire is not black. And I feel as though they just stuck her in there for diversity just to like grab that black audience or like, you know, they can have black characters, but you don't have to do that because if you really do the Titan, Cyborg has to pop up sooner or later. He's black. You know what I mean? But uh, I don't know. Oh, I thought he was, he's not in there, huh? No, he's not in there yet. I haven't seen him in the episode and they've only, they've only had two episodes. Awesome. Awesome. Definitely. When you get a chance, um, when you get a chance, Dahlia, definitely send me your information so I can put it down in the description. 
people definitely go check her channel out go check her channel out and we want to i want to do a show with your uh with your um your partner dahlia the one that you told me about we he tell him that we both need to talk soon we need to talk very soon um but yeah titans titans uh, better than i expected way better than i expected i expected it to be like some old you know how you say Kenny is some old cosplay, uh, uh, like an inch above cosplay. Yeah, like like it looks like you're watching someone's home video or fan yeah, made yeah. movie. Yeah, this one it was it's actually pretty good. It's actually pretty good. good. I want I might have to do Halloween without Mika, and I hope everything is going okay. Absolutely, thank you, Dahlia. Thank you, thank you. We should definitely do a show. As a matter of fact, next week is booked up with a couple of people, but um. Because I have a couple of um, special guests coming on, but uh, the week after that, we can definitely do a show. You know what I'm saying? We could probably make a main event out of it. Or if you want me to come on your venue, and you can advertise um, or plug anything that you have going on. Because I mean, you talk about talent, guys. This woman here, Dahlia Dark, and I, and again, I've known her for such a long time. This woman here, Dahlia Dark, is absolutely amazing. If you can list your Instagram up in the chat right here, so people can go visit it and see what you're about. I think they'll love it. I think they'll love it, especially if you're a fan of cosplay. She's done independent films and so on and so forth. She's done a lot. She's a very good person, wonderful woman, absolutely stunning and beautiful. You'll love her work. So, I mean, um, absolutely. We'll exchange information. We'll definitely exchange information. Yeah, her Instagram is Dahlia Dark. Definitely look her up. Look her up. You will love her stuff. Love her stuff. Um, next up, we are talking about, what's his name? Oh, yeah, Adam McKay. He leaves Funny or Die. Oh, well, yeah, the website, huh? Yeah, well, I mean, like, it was it was dying anyway, but I mean, like, he just put the nail in the coffin. You haven't really, you haven't really been kicking up the site since, like, the early 2000s. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I mean, like, it was dying anyway. Impressive. But, like, I mean, like, he's actually gone off to make, like, some good movies, like, recently. You know what I'm saying? He's been doing, like, good movies and stuff like that. So, I mean, like, I, it was kind of like a thing from what I understand. Like, they kind of, like, um, betrayed him. And he was like, oh, well, so you don't want to do this to any other? Fuck it. I'll leave you. And that's what he did. And there's an article right here, and I'll be short with this one right here because I don't think many people know about Adam McKay or anything. Like, if they know about Funny or Die, that was pretty much backing up. I had to put somebody in check. I'm okay, mortified, but I'll live. How much is left for the show? Okay, she wants to come on to the show right now, so she can come on. Um, because I want to, I, I, I'll, I want to really talk about um Halloween. I really want to talk about Halloween. So I'll stop sharing this. I'll go back to this. And uh, let me see if she's ready to come back on the show. Give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. Come back on. We have more. Okay. So hopefully she'll come back on. Let me send her an invite. Yeah. Let me see. She got a little issue going on over there. I hope she beat whoever it was up. I like to see violence. Mm -hmm. More violence. Why violence? <laughs> Why violence? <laughs> Why I go, Kenny? Wah. <laughs> Wah. <laughs> oh. Lord. Okay. Okay. I sent Mika an invitation real quick. And she should be coming here. Awesome. Right scent, baby. Mm. Hey, Dahlia, if you're not doing anything, if you want to come on the show now, you can. I mean, we use Google Hangouts, so if you give me your um, email and stuff, I can send you. Hey, um, let me see a free play mode. Man. Oh, let's say no, 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 no. Yeah, just checking some of these comments over here. I hope she can come back on. I think it's all good, yeah. Yeah. Well, moving right along, I mean, I'm just going to go back to the subject of, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Oh, God. I'm Funny or Die. Adam guy. McKay. Adam McKay leaving, uh, leaving Funny or Die. There's a short excerpt about um, Adam McKay. He just don't want to be bothered with it anymore, especially since they, like, they pretty much did something to him that pissed him off. I don't know. Oh, Mika, there you go, baby. There you go. Mika, you all right? Hi, I'm sorry. You all right? I just Hello. learned tonight. Welcome back. Thank you. 
I just learned tonight you can't take niggas nowhere. Yeah, that's all. On, that's <laughs> You are, I already knew what it was because I was I kept reading through it. Then after a while, I heard somebody said, Motherfucker. I was like, Oh yeah, this is my type of party right here. I know this. <laughs> <laughs> I know ignorant. I know ignorant. I said, but yeah. Let's talk about that Halloween movie. Okay. So so I went and saw the Halloween film. I wasn't able to go to see a see the VIP screen in that um that Mika scheduled for me, she had, that had it, she had hooked me up with. I got there while well, I was stuck in New York traffic, as always. I, for some reason, I always get caught in New York yeah, traffic. Yeah, and you Everybody. know what, though? It's like, you could have made it. Yeah, but you, you, told, me made, that, you told me that. The, you know what you didn't know, so it was like, I can't focus on that. You told me the VIP screening was at, um, was at, what was it, 7.30, 7? No, you told me it was 7. She told me, she said, it, man, she said, them niggas didn't get started till like 7.45, 8 o'clock, like. You know what I'm saying? Movie to like seven forty-five, and I was like, "God damn!" It's like he could have motherfucking made it. So, what I noticed about Halloween was that all the sequels that came after the original Halloween were completely removed, right? And they just based it like what forty years later, right, right, right. That's that's that. That's what I thought of um Halloween. I, I really thought it was okay. I'm not a horror movie fan like that. I mean, like there are some horror movies that I will see. But, um, this one I, I like, you know, like they the people died horribly, even though you didn't see most of their deaths. Well, well, you, still, honestly, uh, honestly, in the first Halloween, you really didn't see him really kill them. You would see him them pan to a scene of him yeah. stabbing them or so on and so Yeah, on. you're like you 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 see how they died. You know, but but you don't really get to see them actually get killed. All right, don't snap your neck to me. Um, you don't really see them get killed, but like you know, they died horribly though. Okay. You know, I'm just I'm just looking at the movie like, oh, oh my god, I loved it though. I loved it. Hold on, let me add David Aaron. Keep finish giving your views. Finish giving your views on the um, movie. Let me add David Aaron. He wants to come on the show. Um. The, the the movie made me the movie made me completely pissed off because the most logical things that you should have done was not done throughout the whole movie. <laughs> like, oh, there's danger ahead. Let me go ahead and check it out. And I'm like, you fucking idiot. Have you ever been to a horror movie? People in the movie theater. That's it. That's a Halloween thing. Yeah, tell him what the nah, it was all it was all she went to a Halloween a with all motherfucking black people. So you know how that shit turned out. You know how that shit go. You know how that shit go. <laughs> it was it was a it was a movie theater filled of black folks, and we were all yelling at the fucking screen. Each and every one of us. Mm. And some of them even left, like, I can't take this anymore because these yeah, people no, acted stupid. Honestly. <laughs> okay. So I sent David Aaron an um, a invite to the show. My honest opinion of Halloween 2018. My honest opinion. Hope it's worth my $12. That shit was fucking garbage. That shit oh. was garbage. That shit was my garbage. I hated it from beginning to end. That shit was garbage. The best thing about that whole fucking movie was the mask. The rest of this movie was fucking garbage, bro. Garbage, in my opinion, I think. I, know, that's why, I think that's why I was so mad. Yeah, it was garbage. It was garbage. It was stupid. The plot was all over the fucking place. There were yes, it, the comedy it was fell flat. The comedy that they tried to introduce fell flat as fuck. Uh, what else? The um, the uh, the the, the it, it just honestly the best parts of that movie were um, what's her name? What's her name? Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis and that mask he wore. Everything else was stupid. There were maybe like a few times when I was like, oh, okay, there's that, but it just felt like put it like this. We need, we need, we need to make Rob Zombie great again. Rob Zombie did the Halloween. <laughs> film. I'm telling you, Rob Zombie encompassed the Halloween films the way they were supposed to be. This guy who I just didn't like it. I just didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. This one was directed by, I think this one was direct. Who was who directed this one? Um who was the director of this? David Gordon Green. David Gordon Green. And he made um, what's the name? 
what was that? It was another, it was a film that he made that I actually liked that um that he made. And this one right here was just it was just boring. The scenes were just horrible. Yeah. I'm not a horror movie fan like that. So no, it was I like love horror films. I love horror films. I absolutely love horror films. And this this right here, I just wanted it over with. I just wanted, <laughs> I just wanted it over with. I was in the movie theater and like people were just upset. Like people got up and left. I mean, um, like you said, even in yours, people got up and left. Yeah, people got up and left. Left. They got up and left. It was bad. It was a very bad film. I didn't like it. Like when the movie book, ended, I was the first one up and leave. Since, like the one part, like first off, I understand. And then like, you know, I'm trying not to divulge too much of the film. That's the only thing I hate about not doing spoilers. But there was one, like there was certain, there were so many parts in that film that made absolutely no sense. There was one part where like the guy holds up the mask to Michael Myers and the doctor oh, wait, that is agitating him. Why the fuck would you hold his mask up, shaking it and shit like that? If you see it's agitating him, not only him. Yeah, it is a waste of money, Dolly or Dark. I'm going to give you my honest opinion. Wait to cop that shit on the bootleg, man. Cop that shit on get the bootleg. Fire stick. Yeah. Or either get, yeah, download like fire stick that bitch or whatever. It's horrible because it did. It tried to encompass the feel of like classic horror. And it, it failed miserably, in my opinion. It failed miserably. They should have had Rob's, like, honestly, I think Rob Zombie's depiction of Michael Myers was absolutely amazing. His first Michael Myers film. The second one was a little bit, like, dreamy. And, like, the second one that Rob Zombie did, I wasn't too fond of. That was with the unicorn and stuff like that. But like, what? Um, I didn't even see the second one. The unicorn. You never saw the one. The second nah, one. I saw the first one, but there's a unicorn in the second one. Yeah, they tried to delve into like the one that Rob Zombie did. He tried to delve into the aspect of like the psych, like the psychological aspect of um, Michael Myers, and that's what made it fail. Whereas, though, like in this, like in the first one that he did in 2007, I absolutely loved it because I love the way Rob Zombie portrays these monster serial killers. They're like these big, hulking, like menacing-looking motherfuckers that you know, like. You look at this Michael Myers, this one in this new in this new movie. He catch me on the right vitamin pack day. I'll fuck him up. No bullshit. I, I I'd fight him. I'd fight him. Whereas though, like the Rob Zombie um Michael Myers, you'd be like, nah, bro, this motherfucker. Nah, this motherfucker. Let's run or like whatever. You're like I'm good. I will, forget, <laughs> I will never forget in Rob Zombies. And yeah, I'll get back to this new Halloween one. I'll, I'll I'll get back to the new Halloween one, but I will never forget that one time, that one uh, that one scene on Halloween where like he was standing at the at the door, and the woman closed it and locked it, and he just walked through that bitch big as fuck. Like I was like, what the? He didn't even like open the door. He just walked through it, and the door just came off the hinges and shit. I was like, we got a Michael Myers in California. Her name is Maxine Waters. <laughs> She said, we got a Michael Myers. No, she's big like Michael Myers, but she just walked through the door. Kenny, you don't remember that scene in the first um Halloween that Rob Zombie did? Where, like, dude just walked, li- like, Michael Myers literally walked, like, he was looking through the glass well, glass part of the of, of the door like this, and then, like, the woman closed the door, and he just said, <laughs> like, just came through the door. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, let's walk up. And he was big. You could tell it was a big motherfucker. In that jumper, I'm telling you, in that um, what was that called? The jumper. You know how to explain his jumper too? Because he killed some some uh some like trucker who was taking a dump. Yeah, Joe Grizzly. Remember he said my name is Joe Grizzly. I think yeah. that's where he got the jumper from. But in this one, it just it just tried too hard and it failed miserably. The jokes weren't. I I, I, I didn't understand. Oh, I I don't even want to give away some of the movie, but I did. They were not. Yo, your voice went out for a minute, baby. Oh, my connection is fucked up. Um, oh, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. I was saying that I didn't understand the reporters. Like, what was their yeah, purpose? Exactly. <laughs> you bring them into the fray, they played like a major purport, like they were a major component of the play, film, and then you just- a major part in the movie. Then you just, what's the name? Like, to me, I feel as though, they that move they didn't know what to do with that film. It was all over the place. It was all over the place. And then some, some of the situations that and yeah, I understand they were trying to go with like the classic horror or like the, the grindhouse feel. But the I'm honestly the only one who can do those grindhouse films perfectly well. And Dahlia Dark, I think you'll agree with me on this one. Is uh what's the name? Is Quentin Tarantino. 
Quentin Tarantino. Robert Rodriguez. Yeah, Robert, Robert Rodriguez too. Quentin Tarantino. They do great jobs with Grindhouse or like classic horror esque type films. Like Dolly, yes. Hall, whether you know it or not, she does a lot of like Grindhouse films, so she would understand where I'm coming from. She's been in a lot of Grindhouse films as well. So, um, the problem I had, the problem I had with this new Halloween, is a simple oh, fact that um, it, it just didn't make any sense. Like. I'm tr how can I say this without like having people get upset about me um, divulging too much of the story? Because it didn't make sense when it came to you got all these weapons in the house and you let them come in. <laughs> yeah. You got a full arsenal. I mean, like, boom, like you got shit that can take out a town. She got shit that could take out of town and you still let him in. Like exactly. me myself, it would be range attack. This motherfucker, by the time I finish, it wouldn't be nothing left but fucking chopped meat and fucking tattered clothes. No bullshit. <laughs> you know, like, 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 like I said, the logic wasn't there. It wasn't no logic whatsoever. Then I enjoyed the last hour of the film. Build up was slow. Yeah, I understand that. Um, but fierce play, I have to disagree with you on this one. That 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 shit had no logic to it, and yeah, most horror films don't. But it follows a linear pattern. Like this shit was just all over the fucking place. It was all over the place, and the kills. They didn't know if they wanted to be graphic or they wanted to stick to the classic, like the classic feel of like just showing him raise the knife and then not showing you the kill. You know, right, what I mean? right. It was just it was just poorly it was poorly edited. The cinematography on it was horrible. The acting was subpar. Jamie Lee Curtis was the only one who carried that whole fucking film, and she old as shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's bad. When Jamie Lee Curtis was the best part of that fucking film, I got to the point when I did see her, I'd be like, I was sitting there in the movie theater like this and shit like that, right? And I threw some popcorn at one time like that. I did something and I threw. <laughs> Foxy Cleopatra says it was politically correct. Finally, a black character that did some real black people shit. He broke out saying, y'all gonna die. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know what? The little, I'm gonna be honest with you. The little boy, the little boy like the little was the funniest too. aspect. Everything else, all the jokes dropped flat. All the jokes dropped flat. <laughs> Believe me when I tell you. Yeah, that said, little boy, oh, yeah. he, just that little boy he, he, was Myers, he was like, I am out. Yeah. I'm gonna call somebody. I'll see you later. <laughs> and he just, I don't know. He just didn't do it for me. And the ending was just so fucking bored. It was just like. Yeah, it was flat. It was flat. It, it was flat. flat. That film, that so, film for me, I mean, like, I, I just I, I just wanted it over with. And I went in there with high expectations. I love slashers. Nerd pins. Nerd pins, let me see. The new Halloween and I'm so disappointed because I expected so much, so much, um, so much more from David Gordon Green. Believe me when I tell you, I expected so much more from him because I mean, like, uh, he's made some good films. He's made some good films, some good films. But um, I would say this right here. Mm. You honestly, you want me to really put it out there? Yeah. This shit get like three nerd pins out of ten. Wow. No pocket protector with a leaky ass pin. That's that's real sweet of that's, you. So that's kind of like two pins, bro. That shit was horrible. I would never go watch that's, that. Again. That is not a movie I would go see again. Really I, nice. I, that I is see, really really I nice. Venom. I go see Venom before I see fucking um. Go see Venom again before I see um fucking what's the name? Halloween. Like, uh, Halloween. 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 I'm not even gonna get that. I'm not even gonna like grab that shit up. That shit was horrible, man. That shit was horrible. But yeah, Foxy. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I was I was totally disappointed with that Halloween film. It was I, I was totally <laughs> disappointed with it. Completely disappointed. After especially if you're coming from Rob Zombie shit. And a lot of people complain and put it like this. If you hated Rob Zombie shit, you gonna hate this shit. Because Rob <laughs> Zombie, Rob Zombie, he showed you the fucking kills. And he showed you the brutal verse, like visceral nature of um Michael Myers. And he was a big dude. He, he was menacing and shit at one point, like Rob Zombie, the, re the reason why I like Rob Zombie's um, Halloween, because like the mask looked like he didn't even really want to wear it. You're so like, shit was just like flailing away at the edges and shit like that. It was burnt on one side, dirty, 
cutting some spots and shit like that. Where is though like this yeah. this one the mask looked good. The mask looked good. But like um as far as like Michael Myers, I don't know. I mean, I think I enjoyed the hammer scene that he did with the woman in the kitchen. Where he, yeah. Where like he he walked and then he looked like this and he was like he chose he chose his weapon. He was like axe beam boom, boom, knife and then he said bing 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 hammer. Like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he just chose that what's the name? But it's it it was like nah. That, that shit was horrible, bro. Was yeah, horrible. even the kid died in the movie. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah, they killed the kid too. Which, which is, you know what? I don't mind them doing that in horror films because um, kids die. Kids die by, by murderers. They die by murderers. And if you really want to encompass the feel of a good horror film, you got to add a little bit of like shock factor to it. But you know, they really didn't show like mm-hmm. some, a gruesome death of the kid. Like, like, you know, some of the films I grew up watching, like Maximum Overdrive. I remember as a kid watching Maximum Overdrive, that truck literally ran that kid over and like you saw him like, Go over him like, ba-dum, ba-dum. yeah, yeah, yeah. The kid's death in Halloween, his, his death was clean, yeah. It was a clean death, boy. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. it was, it was, it was nah. I wouldn't suggest go see this film at all. I wouldn't suggest it, it, go see it, it at you all. gave it a very generous two nerd pins, yeah. Well, I mean, like Mika, I mean, like, what do you, what did you think of it, honestly? Like, would you go see it again? Did you, what's there to think? What's there to think? <laughs> I was totally pissed off with the whole movie. Yeah. I, I I was mad with everybody. I was mad with every single person except for Jamie Lee Curtis. Well, no. I um, was mad. But no, Foxy, if you think about it, he never really killed children. Like, the, remember the little girl was in the um crib? Like, Michael Myers has, like, he won't kill babies. But, I mean, I guess this, this new one, he killed kids. Like, you know, <laughs> if you if you over toddler age, I guess, you know, or, like, you able to, like, talk shit. He get, You're going to get it. Yeah, he getting your ass. Yeah, you're gonna get got. Yeah, he getting your ass. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. What what do I think of the Halloween film? There's nothing to think about. Yeah. Like, like it was okay to me because I don't like horror films like that. But at the end of the day, it was horrible. So I kind of agree with you. It could have been better. I still don't understand the reporters. You know. They were just role. like characters. They had no particular or no substantial role within the film. They should have just, just made one live. That's it. That's they it. should have at least made one live. I'm giving all the goddamn spoilers. I don't give a fuck. Go I, ahead, spoil it. Shit, for spoil it. You know what I'm saying? Like they should at least no, let it. one I'm of the right along with you. Fuck it. They should at least let one of the reporters live. Yeah, that would have made the story more interesting. Right, right. And then they could have lived to let to at least. Tell the story because they was trying to get a story from the get go, but no, they had to be killed off. Girl yeah, taking it was. Shit. I agree with you, Foxy. It was fucking garbage. It was yeah. fucking garbage, especially for a slasher film. Especially mm-hmm. for a slasher, I'm expect. I mean, we dealing with today's modern technology. That shit was like, I would say that shit was like some Sci Fi Channel quality type shit, man. <laughs> oh, no. no bullshit. And you know when I say that sci-fi channel, Kenny, you know what that means, bro. Yeah, it's Predator all over again. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. Predator was garbage. Predator was fucking garbage. Don't waste your money on Predator. Don't waste your money on Michael Myers, that new Michael Myers. What else was garbage? Um, I don't know. No, Venom was actually pretty good, even with the without the slow build-up, though. Yeah, it was slow building, but I enjoyed Venom. I really enjoyed it. And I thought I was going to hate it. I really thought I was going to hate it. Yeah, I'll have to check out Venom. I haven't seen Venom yet. I didn't mind I the it out. Word. I gotta, you know what? I got to do a review one night on the, uh, what was that? The El Royale movie that I went and saw. Oh, man. I wanted to see that. Uh, How was it? Meh. Meh. M-E. Meh. Meh. With a capital M? Meh. Meh. With a capital M in a period at the end. Yeah, meh dot 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 dot. <laughs> meh. It, it wanted to be a hey, velvet. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm, so I, tell me more about the film. About what? Tell me why I should or shouldn't see it. If you you know what, go see it, Mika. You might like it, but it's trying to it, it's trying to mimic like Quentin Tarantino's work. And everybody's failing miserably at Quentin Tarantino trying to mimic his work. 
you can already see from oh. you can already see from um the previews that it's like you know how Quentin Tarantino tells his, tells a story from middle from like ending to beginning to middle to yeah. and then like you know the ending is the beginning and they tried this but it just like the characters had no substance there was no good one liners or no no chicness to it or no coolness to it it was just like it tried too hard and you saw it trying too hard. Maybe I'm a hard critique when it comes to certain films that try to mimic Quentin Tarantino's work because I'm a big fan of Quentin Tarantino, mm-hmm. but uh, it, it just fell. It just fell flat. What's, fell. Your, what's your What's your favorite QT movie? Oh my god, Planet. There's no, there's there's no. I like all of his movies. Just about. I love Planet Terror. I love uh, Planet Terror. I love uh, Death. Death Proof was my shit. Yeah, I love Planet Terror. I love Death Proof. I, I- love um. I love Reservoir Dogs. I love Pulp Fiction. I love uh, Kill, Bill Kill Bill 1 and 2, even though I like Kill Bill 1 more than I do 2. Uh, for sure. Kill Bill 1. That's That's much better, yeah. uh, what's the name? Oh, God. What else? What else? There's so many Quentin Tarantino films that I love. Um, um, me too. I love Planet Terror. I love when like they showed the graininess. The, um, yes, it was. The Thanksgiving Day trailer was the shit, Dahlia. Like what was that? Um, Quentin Tarantino's film when he showed Planet Terror. Like the one scene in Quentin Tarantino's um Planet Terror that I absolutely love. And and even though I love Death Proof, because he actually used real racing cars like back in the day mm. when they would use to you yeah. do racing cars. It wasn't no CG, none of that. Shit. Even though he did use some like you know conventional CGI or whatever the case may be, he didn't go overboard with it. But when it came to the race car scenes, it was real race car drivers, stunts, cars, everything. What I did love in Planet Terror, when the film would go grainy and shit like that, like there was one part with the zombies. Yeah, yes, the cars were absolutely awesome. Now, um, it was this one scene in Planet Terror when the zombies were eating the police officers and you saw like they cut the film, but then they went back to it and you saw the zombie build up, bring up his arm like this, but then bash it down and he popped the top of the head of the, zo- the human's head off and ate it, ate his brains. And then like they panned to another scene where it was um, skipping. Then I liked the part when, uh, what's his name? The deteriorating Josh dick. <laughs> Josh Brolin was like, he was like, yeah, I'm going to eat your brain and take all your knowledge and shit like that. Oh, my God. I <laughs> love Quentin Tarantino and um, Robert Rodriguez. Rodriguez. I love it. I love it. If he was to ever be like, look, Danae, I'll let you be an extra in the um, Grindhouse film. I'm like, gotcha. I gotcha. I don't care. I will be there. Man. <laughs> but um, but uh, it was, it, it, it tried too hard. It tried mm-hmm. too hard. And then when it came to, because like, all right, think about it. In Quentin Tarantino's films, right, everybody has their own spotlight. Everybody has their own spotlight. Whereas though they tried it with this, but when Chris Hemsworth came in, unfortunately, he stole the show. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe you might like it because I don't want my opinion to sway you to like, look at this film. I want you to go in there with an open mind and look at it, but you'll see what it's trying to mimic and it's not working. You have to, you have to really, you have to really have that vision or have that clairvoyance or that certain, that certain style or mindset that Quentin Tarantino has to tell the story or mimic his style. Now there have been some independent films that I actually absolutely love that were that I would say was in the realm of uh, Quentin Tarantino, like this one with uh, what's his name, Forrest Whitaker, where it was uh, what was it called? Um, what's the name of this? Catch twenty two? No, 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 no. Um, was it Catch twenty two or Catch forty two? Something like that. It was definitely a good Quentin Tarantino esque type film. I've seen others like Run Bitch Run. I thought Run Bitch Run was a good <laughs> was a good um, grindhouse film. There have been others. There's been so many other um, that 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 you can tell like they nodded towards Quentin Tarantino but did it their own way. This right here, that um, the El Royale one, it tried to mimic his style too much and it failed miserably. Like Galobulus, Lord Galobulus would say, but you have failed me miserably. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to admit about the um, cars and um, Death Proof is like, once um, I saw that 1972 Challenger, I yes, fell in love. Yes, indeed. I fell in love with that car. And I like, like if I ever, ever get the chance to drive mm-hmm. that would be the car oh my I god i've driven a, i've driven a challenger before i've driven a um old style challenger before 
Believe me when I tell you, it's it, it's nothing like grabbing onto a metal car, like driving a metal car, a metal, a steel car. Believe me when I tell you. Yeah. Yeah. So. But yeah. You know what? I don't know if I'm going to carry this down too much longer. I'm going to probably do some game reviews and we can say the rest of these topics for next week's show. That's if you guys want to show up. Sure. Um, I like the new challengers, Dahlia, but I mean, like, um, it's the closest I'm going to get to owning a muscle car if I were to get one. But believe me, because I like the way they still got the old round eyes and everything like that. Mm-hmm. I love the grill of the Challengers and everything like that. I love I, I love, I love, American-made cars. Don't get me wrong. I like Japanese. I love Japanese cars or whatever the case may be, but I love American-made cars. I've always it's been. It's not about that American muscle car. Amer- American-made cars and German cars, I love them. Like, you know, German cars, I love them. I love American-made cars, stuff like that. I'm a big fan of cars. I love cars. You know what I mean? You're, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> Word. So, um, you said that you wanted to end the show a little no, bit. Not, I, mean, I'm a, I mean, like you know, <clears throat> I guess we could cover a couple of a couple of other topics. Oh, you know what, Kenny? Let's talk about Soul Caliber Six. Yeah, I, I, I've been playing for the past couple of days. It's actually, I'll put it like this: the gameplay is solid. It's good, but all the extra shit's lacking. It's almost. Like all the creative player shit you don't really have. Like right. what they do give you is rehash from the last game and it's only like a handful of shit. Right. So you and it almost seems like it's 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 cheaply made too, man, because in an age where you got your stories done in games with all kinds of CG animation, in game right. models, mm-hmm. like even the way tech into their story, where you kind of mix the the storyline that would flow right into gameplay and everything. Right. Soul Calibur just has a bunch of text and pictures, which I'm not a big fan of. Text and pictures? What do you mean? No dialogue? I mean, there's there's like dialogue, but it's just text and pictures with dialogue. It's just they couldn't afford the animation, so they have some guy talking while pictures flash on the screen. It just feels really, no, really not antiquated so to me. Street Fighter. For, for the story mode, too. It's, it's for like, you know, the, the, the main timeline story mode with everybody. And, oh, bro. and if you go back, Soul Calibur uh, 3... Freaking Soul Blade Four. They all had like a little uh, game asset used endings. They couldn't even do that shit here, so it's kind of disappointing. But the gameplay solid, man. And customizing with what they do have is pretty fun. Yeah, I heard you can beat the clothes off of people. Yeah, you can. You can beat them right naked, man. Oh, awesome! I'm just gonna yeah. make a character. When I get it, I'm just gonna make a character that's butt naked. I'm gonna be like, yeah. No clothes to beat off of me. Yeah. One thing I'm noticing, I think the last game had a feature where you can make them look kind of oily and greasy. I don't think that's a part of it right now. <laughs> if my memory serves me right, because I remember that being a feature where you kind of select the body shine of your character, make it look sweaty. <laughs> oh, gosh. And there's women in this game, too, so... That's the point, man. You gotta beat the big titties out of bra. That's why... That's why Soul Calibur's, and that's kind of sad because this series didn't start off like that. I'm not a big fan of that feature myself because I, I just want to play the fighting game. And I don't want to get my clothes knocked off. Me. But it started off semi seriously, and actually, you know, by, by the fourth game, you can see two naked people fighting. You know, it's a yeah. fight, man. That now, was it. <laughs> now, now you hell, two naked mothers fighting to death. <laughs> greasy, too, bloody. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> My goodness. So who's your, uh, so who's the character that you play with, Kenny? I wish Lizard Man was back, so I I can't use him anymore. So I I use uh Mitsurugi and still and uh Astaroth. I want my Lizard Man back, man. It kind of sucks that I can't have him. Lizard Man. <laughs> yeah, that? Lizard Man was my dude, right? The shit, but he's not there. You see him in a in a dumb story fight, like you run a random Lizard Man, but you can't actually pick him. It's, it's pretty dead. You can make one, but he didn't have the actual fighting style, so it's pretty whack. It's- Overall, though, I I don't think the game is worth. Uh, like full price right now, right? But they promised, oh, if you get a season pass, we'll give you all kinds of shit for your create mode and blah blah blue. Maybe it goes on sale, be worth a little more. But you know, I I, I bought it from the jump, but yeah, it's pretty fun though. Yeah, I always like Soul Calibur. Gameplay solid. I never got into it. I was too busy playing Street Fighter and other shit like that. I like being able to uh, sidestep, so I, I like this shit. I like, I mean, like you know, when that came out, I think what took my attention off it was um, Power Stone, because I started playing Power Stone, and I got sucked into that, and I was mm. like, oh man, that's real 3D. Well, like with this, uh, you know what it is? 
I think it's no blood in it because like you fight you, these big these, these people fighting with all these weapons and shit. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's always been yeah. Yeah, I want to see some blood. Like somebody does somebody gotta bleed, man. Well, it's, it's basically Tekken with swords. That's that's what it boils down to. And they use kind of the same hit spark effects and whatnot. This battle strengthens the soul of Mitsuru. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> <Strengthens> like the soul. <laughs> I do like that bad cheesy announcer they they've been having since like the original games on PlayStation. Oh man, he was like, "This battle strengthens the soul." You know what? <laughs> Our last topic we're gonna cover tonight because we definitely got to do this one more than anything else. We're gonna end the show with it's oh man this and and it kind of like breaks my heart a little bit, but I mean he's old now. I mean like he had you know it's time like you know what I'm saying. Oh yes. Yeah. Carol Spinney. Oh yeah, yeah. Carol Spinney leaves Destiny Street after nearly fifty. The 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 legend. Yep. I never yeah. knew it was a man. I honestly couldn't tell. <laughs> I think he's like what? He's eighty four now. Amazing. He's up there. He's up there. I mean, when we were eighty four, motherfucker was like grown. Like you know what I'm saying? Original big it- bird, Carol Spinney. Spinney leaves Sesame Street after nearly 50 years. And this is at the New York Times right here. It says Woodstock.com, Woods, Woodstock, Connecticut, the friendly bearded face of Carol Spinney may not be one you recognize immediately. But if you have watched TV at any point in the past 50 years or so, you are almost certainly familiar with this work since 1969. He has played the parts of the gentle, inquisitive Big Bird and the lovable, disgruntled Oscar the Grouch. Your boy, Kenny. That's my favorite. That's- treat the long-running children's program this thursday as he so often has spiny 84 plans to travel to the studios of asturia queens where sesame street is produced and recorded some voices for his colorful alter egos then he will retire from the program his roles will be passed on to new performers and his remarkable half-century run will in which he has embodied two of the most beloved characters on television will come to an end this is so sad Oh, he's so, he's amazing, it. man, for so long. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Sesame Workshop, the nonprofit education organization that produces Sesame Street, did not have a precise figure for the number of episodes Spiny has appeared in. But a spokeswoman said the number was likely thousand, one of the more than 4,400 4, episodes that have been created. Oh, my God. Spiny in the early 1970s playing Big Bird is one of the most joyous things of my life, he said, Robert Fury. Wow. You know, it's a retirement well-deserved. Right, exactly, exactly. Spiny, who spoke last week from his living room here, seated next to his wife, Deborah, said that he had a few, he had few, if any, regrets about his time on Sesame Street. I always thought, how fortunate for me that I got to play two of the best Muppets, he said. Playing Big Bird is one of the most joyous things of my life. As if he had long been con- contemplating the departure from Sesame Street, where he has worked since his debut, Spiney answered, no, not at all. But in recent years, Spiney said the physical requirements of performing yeah. the characters had become difficult for him, and he had developed problems with his balance. He stopped doing the pur- puppeteering for Big Bird in 2015 and has since been providing only the voices for him and Oscar. Hey, look at that big-ass suit. I'd be taxing where that thing. Oh, man. I'm, I'm, it's heartbreaking. It's sad to see him go. I know, I know. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, we all grew up with Sesame Street. It is what it is. And you know, about it is, we forget that some of these people are getting older. Like, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm old, but you know, I don't, you know, you don't really expect them to age like, or you don't really think they're the age that they are. But then when you think back, you're like, damn, wait, he was like 40 back then. So he's probably like, you know, damn. And I'm I'm 40. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, like, what the fuck? Like, well, I, mean, I just remember like when I was little, I was still in the crib and Sesame Street just come on and I'm just ooh, shaking the crib until the yep. shit broke. <laughs> I loved Sesame Street. Yeah. That's how a chick became literate. Oh, watching Sesame Street. He was at the Comic Con in his area about a week ago. Oh, the guy who played Big Bird? Carol Spiney? Oh, man. He was there? Yeah, he said he was there. Oh, man. 
I so, gotta make it next year, man. I swear. Thoughts, so any closing thoughts? I mean, like, we'll cover the rest of the topics. I'll leave these topics for next week, and we'll add a pod. The, close, the closing thought, like, man, like he will be missed. Yeah. For my my, like, he's been there for fifty, but thank you for my 35, 40 years. You know, just bringing joy to families everywhere. You know, especially children, and, and it's sad to see him go. But you know, like due to like the physicalities, I totally understand why he has to retire. Yeah, I mean, he's eighty-four years old. He's eighty-four, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, ah, you will be missed. That's my thought. Yeah, fierce play says it was his final appearance. Oh man. So well, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of sad. Kind of sad. Kind of sad. It is sad. But you know. That brings this show to a close. Any closing thoughts? Anything you guys want to plug or push out there? Because you definitely know I'm going to put your links down below. Dahlia Dark, definitely give me your um, link information. I'm going to list it in the description down below so that other people can see it. And we need to talk so we can set up a show. Okay? Um. Yeah. yeah like, I just um have an interview posted in October's issue of Urban Magazine. I did an interview with um, Growing Up Hip Hop ATL's um, Ayana Fight. She right. is the daughter of DJ Hurricane. Right. Um, I did an interview. I will be sending the um, link below. Where, do, where the hell do I send the link to me? In the chat message right here? You know what? Just send it to me and I'll put it in the description down below. Okay, so cool. When they, um, when they come to the, watch the video, they can just click yeah. on it. Yeah. So that's out right now. So, um, can I, Check can it I, out. Like, click on the, the link, page 60. Can I apply? Can I apply? <laughs> yeah, if you want to. Oh, I'm just fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. What do I have to do to Kenny, get Kenny, any closing thoughts? What do I have to do to get Um, No, nah, I was just surprised <laughs> he was there for that long. Hello? Jesus. Yeah, right here. Just yeah, the, the, okay. yeah. Yeah, also, I didn't know he was eighty four. I really didn't know he was eighty four. I did no, not. I, was, know. I thought they just switched off and rolled year after year. I thought he had well, honestly. I thought he had stopped doing Big Bird years ago. I thought he stopped on Big Bird too. Mm. You know, I thought he stopped, but he he hung in there. I give him that much. Hats off to you, Cal Spinney. That's off. Mm. Anything, mm. You guys, anything you guys want to plug before you go, before we sign off? No, just, um, oh, I got to talk to you about the show. I got to talk to you about my show, but I'll tell you that when we get off here. Okay, cool. No problem. No problem at all. Kenny, anything you want to um plug? Um, Links at the bottom. Click the usual. And please, parents of high schoolers, please teach your children that when you're using a bathroom to take a dump, you shit inside of the toilet, not on the floor. <laughs> you don't you don't you don't write on the walls with your feces. You don't throw the feces on the ceiling. You also don't My take God. the feces and smear it all over the damn light switch. That's not cool. Man. Ew. Yeah. Seriously? It's, not cool. it's nothing like writing your name in feces. Tell me, Ew. believe me when I tell you. It has Dahlia Dark. Her um, her um, da, um. Mika, God bless a power wash. <laughs> Mika's Instagram and all of her links are in the description down below, or I can send them to you personally. Dahlia Dark, do you have a Facebook? If you have a Facebook or a Facebook fan page, let me know and I'll communicate with you. Okay, but um, we can I can communicate with you on Instagram as well, or if you use Twitter, it's whichever one. I have all formats, all different platforms, and so on. You know. So that we can communicate, but we definitely have to talk. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Writing, uh, shitting on the wall is an offense. It's very bad, and I mean, like you know, it's rough for the guys that have to clean it up. Now, see me when I shit on the wall, I usually like uh, try to aim my asshole up to the left. <laughs> try to aim my asshole up to the left, so that that way. It's easier for the guy to come off because I'm not gonna sit on that filthy toilet and catch some type of <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you have no idea how many footprints I've cleaned off my toilet stalls, man. 
<laughs> oh, and, and I'll tell you what, I forgot to mention. There's a sneaking suspicion someone left a log of shit somewhere in the heater because oh! no matter what you do, it smells like shit. <laughs> <laughs> fucking disgusting. Oh my god, I want to shake that teen's hand. Fucking scumbag. Uh. But he's like, Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> you know they don't like you. You know they don't like you. I know, because every time I ask me to do something, I say, no, I'm not doing that for you. Move away from me. I tell them to clear my halls and all that fun shit. So, of course. Fucking disgusting. And this is why I don't give these animals paper towels. I let them have like a little nub of it so like only like five people get paper towels and nobody else gets nothing. This is why they don't get shit refilled, because it's shit like this. Like, Behaving, I'll refill your fucking paper towels. Here's a nice chunky one for you, Kenny. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> yeah, they threw it on a high rise too. There's like a little oh high rise. What is like? What are these? What are you like? Um, what is this like? A school for chimps or monkeys or some shit like? Well, the high school. <laughs> what are they? Park Simeon or some shit? No, like, a bunch of know, fucking like, animals, man. Just bunch of games with four and shit. Like fucking horrible. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I feel bad for you, Kenny. <laughs> I really do. Oh, I got a power oh, wash and a mask. It's please, fine. please be sure to tune in because we'll we're, we're gonna finish up with Adam McKay leaving Funny or Die. We're gonna talk about Apple under fire for allegations of shady business. Hanna Barbera cinematic starting their own cinematic universe. Oh boy! We're talk about Call of Duty Four, Black Black Ops Four, and it's Assassin's Creed, Hulk the No Kin, a bunch of other video games. Sony and AT and T tearing up uh, Crunchyroll. Yeah, Funimation will no longer be with Crunchyroll, but we'll have all that information for you next week. Messed up, but we'll talk about that next time. Yeah, we'll talk about that next time, along with the other bevy of topics and a gallimaufry of other colorful, like, uh, situations and stuff. And um, Mika is going to bring the Battle Royale like she did this time. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> going to bring the Battle Royale like she did. This time, Mika, I love that shit. You know, I'm not gonna cut that out of this fucking video. Right? <laughs> You're not, not oh my it. god, I'm not <laughs> yeah, that shit's staying in, brother. <laughs> that shit's staying in there. I like, I like when the violence came through because you heard me. She was like, "Motherfucker, I told you." And she, I think she just grabbed his ass up with just like, "You're supposed to say what everyone else." <laughs> <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, that brings this show to a close. We are stocking in at the space station. The ship is has to refuel up, and we're back at TNT Photon HQ because I have to leave there when we have the show because I'll get arrested, and I don't want to go to jail again. I'm tired of jail. I'm too old for jail. Plus, my rubbery asshole won't handle them. And then when I call my mother for commentary, she wouldn't even fucking answer the phone. But yeah, we'll have another show next week. And um, we're going to have some fun. Thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. I really enjoyed it. Be sure to hit the like button, Hi. subscribe, and hit the notification Hi. bell when we go live and when we upload. I may do some gaming videos come tomorrow. Uh, I might finish up Hokko no Kin, Lost Paradise. Awesome. And... um. Be sure to check out Dahlia Dark's official page. Dahlia Dark, we're going to talk. Be sure to check out Kenny's. Um, oh, whose dog is that? This is my friend's dog. <laughs> oh, it's a what is it, a Great Dane? No, it's it's a uh, German Shepherd Husky. That motherfucker like he looked like he paid rent. He big as fuck. <laughs> yeah, so she's still a puppy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, she's full grown now. Yeah. Okay. She's still tough as far as energy goes and age, but she's she, she's grown. full grown. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But thank you, everybody. Thank you for stopping through. I really enjoyed having you guys on the show. I enjoyed um, what's her name, Ginger Snap, being on the show. I enjoyed everybody coming through. I enjoyed you guys. Love all your support. Thank you, all you new subscribers. We wouldn't be able to do this without you. You guys are absolutely amazing. I don't know why you watch me, but I thankful that you do watch me. And watch my <laughs> calls. Have got, a great week, guys. Bye, everybody. Do this until they kick us off, okay? All right. Have a great week, guys. We love you. You're the best. Take care. Sleep well. <laughs> <laughs>